Welcome to the ATP Project. You're with your hosts, Matt, Steve, and Sophie. Hi. How cool is that? Hello, Sophie. How are you? Good, guys. Wow, we've never seen you here before. We've got someone here with, with, with a completely wonderful story to talk about gardening and health and gut health and everything like that today. How cool is that, Matt? That's brilliant. Because the whole plan of this is to help people to take control of their own health. Um, I, as a naturopath, I really felt bad holding people's health ransom. But that's why I always used to feel like it. I, you know, I have to charge a consultation fee to be able to give you some advice. Yeah. And then for you to be able to take the medicine, you've got to pay extra. And it, it was always this big thing where I wanted to help people, but I was just stuck in this position where I had to still had to pay my bills. Yeah. So now that we've got the podcast and we've got ATP and we've got a bit of a platform that pays the bills, <laughs> like we can now go away and give away some really great free advice, really help people mm. to help themselves and take control of their own health. And the best place to do that is in your own home. Um, so... I want to know your story mm. and yeah. how you got to this awesome point where you have now capable of controlling your own health using nature and all yeah. the tools that around you and have the ability not only to control your own health but actually make your own medicine. Yeah. I reckon that's wicked. So wh- wh- what's your history? Tell us about well, you. Well, just, we'll just start off. Matt said that he'd bring me in on this podcast and pay my bills as well. Yeah, yeah. Is so that, that was, yeah, yeah cool. that's why I'm Make here today. Is, yeah, that's so shit. just write that one down. Yeah, guys. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Get out the red pen, man. Red pen. <laughs> <laughs> cut, cut. Oh, oh God. God. No. So uh, my story, basically... I've always kind of been one of those sick kids, you know, not you're not like sniffly, sneezy kind of kids, but I was one of those kids. I grew up in Cairns and I would get pneumonia, you know, yeah, like yeah, who yeah, gets yeah, pneumonia yeah, in Cairns? Yeah. It's like 40 degrees. Yeah, it's a lung um, infection for those yes, who know. Yeah. Yep, so pneumonia, lots of different lung infections. Um, I would always get tonsillitis, so really susceptible to tonsillitis. Uh, all those different kind of kind of problems that would would kind of come up we wouldn't really know what was going on it'd go away you know things would be discussed like removing tonsils you know yeah. all the great options you know you got a problem mm. with with your gallbladder remove your gallbladder you got a problem with your tonsils remove it we don't need them yep. that's the, what they the think the medical term is yeah. when in doubt cut it out yeah Sorry, exactly <laughs> perfect yeah yes. so i always had you know lots of kind of health problems like that growing up we couldn't really work out what was going on um, probably once I reached about 13, 14, I started to get really bad periods, like excruciating periods, yeah. couldn't go to school, um, had to stay home. When I mean stay home, I wasn't kind of walking around, sitting on the couch, eating ice cream. It'd be like bed bound yeah. on all the kind of painkillers, medications mm. we could because it was just unbearable. Yeah. So, of course, you go to all the different health professionals, see all the different specialists, Pill, 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 you need a pill. Yaz, Diane, you know, Susan from Accounts, Caroline, you know, all all the great great pill names that they've come up with over the time. Um, You know, so nothing was ever discussed about endometriosis or getting tested. Nothing kind of went anywhere. It was like everywhere we went, it was about the pill. Um, So, of course, I went on the pill, Mm -hmm. Yaz, Yaz and I. Yaz and I were together for a long time. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We had a long, long relationship. (laughs) So, really, from, yeah, kind of the age of 13 up until quite a few, you know, two or three years ago. Yeah, yeah, Yaz and I were together. So, long term. Yeah, yeah. Long term. Um, Unfortunately. Yes. Now, you dropped the word there, endometriosis. Yes. You want to talk about that? Yes. I'll... I'll quickly talk a little bit about gut health and then where endo actually sure. popped up because at yeah. the time I actually didn't know that I had endometriosis right. and I actually didn't know for until like last year. Oh, basically. wow. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So, we actually went that so, whole time. Oh, I you can't – hang on. Red pen the shit out of this <laughs> yeah, if you have yeah. to. But, and I, know I also know it's February 14th today, but how old are you? I'm 25 now. Okay, I just cool. 25. I just want yep. to <laughs> – <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, am I allowed to ask a woman yeah, their yeah, age? Yeah, yeah. I actually use a lot of collagen. A I'm actually aging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> aging well. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, long time. So, what's that? Yeah. I think it was about 10 years, 10 yeah. years of, of Yaz. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and early on, early too. Yeah. Like and early you know, in the... In the, in the piece kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, and that was, you know, that was crazy because mm. when my parents, we always ate really well. We looked after ourselves. My parents mm. grew food. We were, you know, really involved in the kitchen. When they took me to all different specialists, there was just no other yeah. answer. Yeah. It was the, every single person brought up the pill. And yeah. my parents, you know, pill was known kind of then for contraception. So my parents just couldn't get their head around that because yeah. it's like, well, she's 13. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. So, yeah, it was crazy. So I went on the pill um, and only came off recently. Endometriosis kind of just never was brought up until a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, I then uh, moved down from Cairns to Brisbane to study nutrition. And I 
well, actually, I moved down to study. Uh, I wanted to do pharmacy and medicine. Oh, yeah. So I got into biomedical science, yes. right? Um, and I ended up going on a holiday to Thailand. Yeah. And I got really sick, Ooh. like really sick while I was there. Lots of food poisoning, all kinds of belly upsets, just unbearably sick to the point where it, I just wasn't eating after like the first week of being there because mm. everything I ate made me unwell. Mm. And I came back home after the trip. And you know how it's always a bit of a delayed onset with that sort of stuff. You get sick, you kind of get a little bit better. Mm. And then three months later, you're really sick. Mm. Yeah. And I was sleeping about 23 hours out of the day, Whoa. every day. Like, I mean, I could get up for about an hour in the morning, stumble around, drink some water, and I'd be back asleep. And it wow. happened for about a week. And then, of course, blood starts coming out of, with your stools, mucus, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, all those yeah, signs. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you guys will love this. I yeah. get down to the doctors yeah. <laughs> to tell them about, you know, what's going on. And um, I've got cancer. You know, you've, you've, got, yeah. you've got colon cancer. Oh. Yeah. Let's go to the hospital. You're gonna, you've got colon well, cancer. Well, let's test it. Yeah, yeah, let's. After you, we've, yeah. Uh, we've, we just scared the shit yeah, out yeah, of you. Yeah, just, yeah. Like, <laughs> you're like 21, yeah. sitting here, yeah. no yeah. parents. We think you've got colon cancer. We'll send you to the hospital straight away as an emergency to check that you don't have colon cancer. Yeah. And I'm kind of sitting there going, you know, that's when your whole life kind of, you know, you're oh, like, yeah. oh, God, I've made some bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> wow, already? Oh, man. <laughs> So, we, uh, get, we get to the hospital, obviously do all the testing. I don't have colon cancer. Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a relief. Yeah. <laughs> so, then it's, of course, then it's IBS. I feel like or that's... Or nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, oh, it's in your mind and yeah, it's, it's yeah. not what we thought. Yeah. It's, um, you know, that's, I think I, I just love that with, with bowel problems. It's yeah. like you either got kind of an IBS yeah. or you've got... Um, your bowel's a, either a, just a, irritable. Yeah, mm. a colon cancer. Or you've got cancer. cancer. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> I love that about IBS, you know, irritable bowel syndrome. Like, yeah. no shit, Sherlock. My yeah. bowel's are irritated. <laughs> yeah. Tell me what the actual problem is here because yeah. I will not go on living like this for yeah. the rest of my life yeah. with yeah. IBS and now we know not colon yeah. cancer. Yeah. And we know with just irritable people yeah, yeah. And, and irritable yeah, bowels, yeah, yeah. it could be anything, yeah. any yeah, different thing I'm every day. Irritated. Yeah. <laughs> Choose a better attitude, bowel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fly right, come yeah. on. <laughs> Wake up on the right side of the bed. Yeah. Um, so... It was, yes, and it was kind of like, you know, IBS. And yep. I had this huge belly. Like, I'm talking nine months pregnant yeah. kind of belly for over a year. So, yeah. I just kind of went with it. You know, it was a boy due in June. <laughs> I got asked by that many people. I just wow. couldn't even tell them it wasn't wow. anymore wow. for their Wee. sake. I yeah, felt okay. bad for them. So, we yeah. had this whole kind of story. And my and it kind of looked like it because, you know, the rest of my body was slim. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I had this huge belly. So, I was like, whatever. Wow. Don't blame them. I'll go along with it. So then I thought I've got to start to work on healing myself because yeah. I'd seen, you know, lots of different um, gastroenterologists. I'd had co colonoscopies, endoscopies, which, you know, they're great fun, especially when, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, both ends, yeah, yeah, yeah. They both ends, the in the middle, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drink the solution. You know, you, if you ever yeah, think your yeah. life's bad, those 48 oh. hours leading up to a colonoscopy really, you know, well, they, puts they it all into that, perspective. Magnesium yeah. solution. Always wondered, you know they do the little <laughs> cameras in the capsules too now? Yeah, yeah. I always yeah. imagined if a piece of corn got stuck on it. <laughs> At the start, and then you just go back for your results, and so it's just corn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, corn and carrots. Yeah, you know, the whole way yeah. through. Sorry. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, Jumping scenic up. route. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the whole videography of inside. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and then you know we weren't getting anywhere, and then with the colonoscopy, we found lots of ulceration through uh, my yeah, whole intestine. Okay, okay. Yeah. but yeah. of course, no idea why, no idea how, possibly parasites, whatever, yeah. whatever. So I went and did you know CDSA. Um, testing comprehensive digestive stool analysis. Sorry, just thank you. Break down English. Just love they, they, they test your shit. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And I love that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tell yeah. me about my shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah Do yeah. you know your shit? I just Literally. like posting my poo to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. What I love them. Yeah, too. I yeah. agree. <laughs> I agree. It's great. My partner's beside himself. You know, yeah. Thomas. I don't know what kind of family Tom was brought yeah. up in, but you know how there's those guys that think that women just don't go to the bathroom. Oh yeah. Tom was kind of like that when I met him. Right. Tom has just been in for a whirlwind. Catching it in a cup <laughs> yeah, and yeah, sorting yeah. through it to get yeah. the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah I get Filling it. Filling it in to test you. Yeah, post yeah. It up you go, for oh, you. make sure I get a little bit of everything yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's awesome. So, uh, what? Yeah. So, Results? Yes. Well, what happened? Yeah, so three parasites. Which ones uh, do you remember? Helicobacto, blastocyst oh, pl pylori, no, and then the uh, the diantamoeba one. I always say this one wrong, so I wrote it down. Yeah, diantamoeba fra fragilis. Fragilis, oh, yeah. 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 yeah so, three common ones, those ones. Yeah, yeah. And they, you know, 
got a few friends, a little extra baggage. And, you know, you can't ever, I can't prove that they are from Thailand. I don't know whether I've had them my whole life or anything. Mm. I think it's really just yeah. about you've created the perfect storm yeah. Yeah. for yeah. them to explode, yeah, exactly. haven't you? You've created yeah. that perfect kind of environment for them to just let loose. Yep. They yes. have the availability. Yeah. And yeah. so that's kind of what happened. And, mm. you know, of course, then when you're sick somewhere, you get stressed and you want to just be home, then you got to be so cautious about the food over there and what you're eating. And then yeah. I probably just made it worse and worse. And then by the time, I got home, it was, you know, uncontrollable. Mm, and yeah. Mm. So we did the um, CDSA found um, the uh, parasites and then we also did some more testing um, through scopes of my colon and found out that I had um, like an ulcerative colitis, so like a lymphocytic colitis, which is a, a inflammatory bowel yeah, disease. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so then I decided, you know, move into nutrition and work on healing yourself because, mm. you know, food affects your digestive system, which... <laughs> Any really? gastroenterologist I've seen seems to think it doesn't. Doesn't. That's yeah. right. Yeah. They right. don't. Oh. She's a bland diet. Yeah, yeah. You know, aren't it scotch fingers, yeah. um, rice. The all bland the, yeah, diet. Yeah. Just, oh, we just live on complex carbs yeah, and yeah. starch, did you Which say? Which have mm. always made my bowels worse. Of course they do. You know, they're simple the only food fuel that makes it to there to feed the little yes, buggers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Indiscriminately feed them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just got wild. And then, of course, I was just naughty as because I wouldn't take the medication. And mm. I kind of put a bit of a stance on it. And I said, no, I'm going to I'm gonna heal this. I'm going to do some research, yeah. work out what's going on. And what was the medication they prescribed? Um, Things like sulfur salazine. Yeah, and so, and you know, all the steroids. Yeah. I was Probably sulfur salazine would have been a common yeah. one they yes. give back then. Yeah. Uh, growth hormone kind of yeah. based, yeah, yeah. Really? yeah, yeah the, whole, up, the whole, the whole, you know, kit and caboodle. So they found the lymphocytic colitis yes, and all the ulceration. We, Is this yep. when they discover the endo? No, so wow. no, yeah, no endo still. So we've no yeah. we've found yeah the parasites, the colitis, and then I've started to, to heal it because yeah. I refused yeah. to take medication because of how sick I was. Yeah. I thought honestly, give me a couple of months. I really can't make myself worse. Yeah. I can only make myself better. And so mm. I, you know, threw their little diet recommendations away and just went for it. Yeah. Um, moved into, you know, real food, um, really simple, like, a simple like sugars, you know, because I found that actually helped to break down that um, food in my bowel and I mm. was ab able to absorb my nutrients. Mm. Yeah, I moved into a lot of cold press juicing because I think the way to explain with... Um, colitis is it's kind of like having gastro 24 7 yeah so yeah, you're always yeah. on that diarrhea side and you've really yeah. got to work on basically not being on that diarrhea and side your shit together yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly and um, the lymphocytes itself just for the guys out there well yeah. when talking about lymphocytes what they do is they they attract all these other immune cells they bring all the fluid in they actually dilate all the blood vessels they swell everything up they release these chemokines and that sort of stuff which attract all these other inflammatory mediators and everything to this area which creates a lot of mucus mm -hmm. and then that forms a real vicious cycle because that mucus coats the mucosa mm -hmm. coats the villi which is supposed to be absorbing mm -hmm. all your nutrients the enzymes really struggle to get into the food but the bacteria love it yeah so they get a chance to ferment everything mm -hmm. that creates lipopolysaccharide which is an inflammatory mediator that starts the whole process again yeah and you end up with lots of mucus in through the stool yes. and lots of gas and mm -hmm. toxins as well. So yeah. a big vicious cycle. The reason why I kept asking about endo with the bowels because a lot of people tell us that they, it was only when they started getting black poo that the yes. doctor thought it might have been endo. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, but yeah. Yeah, no, and that's exactly right. And I think, you know, you, you start to just have all this mucus in your stool, you start to have diarrhea all the time, you're really dehydrated, you're yeah. irritable because you have no energy and your tummy is no just your bowels red irritable, yeah, yeah. living in amongst yeah, all that. Exactly. <laughs> like, no wonder I was a, a nasty person for a little while. Um, that's what I blame it on anyway. Yeah, do that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so, you, you know, you have all this irritation and, and you aren't absorbing any nutrients. So, of course, you're going to start to feel terrible and mm. then it, you know, allows those bad bugs and parasites to get stronger and worse and and you know i wasn't kind of managing the situation or controlling it yeah. so i then decided to start you know i think back in the day it was the old what weed seed and yep. Yep. Yes. yeah yeah feed or yeah <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. That. so yeah. you know that was the big idea of it and that you know i didn't have a lot of success with that because it was so overrun i couldn't just kind of kill it off and then hope yeah. while that stuff killed off i could just start adding things in and it would re-influx that area i needed to yeah. work on actually modifying the bacteria in my gut to rebalance out. Absolutely. And you hit on a good point there, modify the bacteria, because you've got to remember Helicobacter pylori, according to CDC, is about two-thirds of the world's population have yeah. Helicobacter. Mm. Blastocyst is about 40% of Australians have it, and the fragilis yep. species is everywhere. Yep. So your mm. bugs cause pain for you where mm. I could have them yeah. and not cause a problem. Yeah. And, and that's where we're talking about story. balance, isn't it? So yeah. we're talking about the competitive exclusion. Yes. And once mm. you lost that load, 
available spaces appeared for these little fellows to move Mm. into um, where previously they weren't. Yeah, and I was just saying to Steve before actually that I'm like the perfect gut right patient. Mm. You know, know, I I really am because it's it's what's going on in my gut that's affecting everything and it's about modifying, you know, having those mod biotics in there. You touched on it before. So you were saying too with the irritable bowel and you were saying you also felt irritable as a person at the time. So what people don't realise too is when we talk about leaky gut wall, there's a direct link Mm. to a leaky gut wall and a leaky blood-brain barrier. Mm. The moment you get an inflamed and inflammation in through the gut, you're going to get a certain amount of leakiness there. But the main cause of leaky gut wall is nutrient deficiencies. And so you get this vicious cycle where your nutrient deficiencies open up these holes to let more stuff yes. in and then the mm. brain's going oh I want some more stuff too please so it opens up all these holes to flood everything through mm. we know that 80% of your happy chemicals in your brain yeah. come from your gut so mm-hmm. there's so much yeah, of what you're cells? touching on here that's just yeah. so yeah. fits perfectly with the science yeah. All yeah. Your yeah. so what cells? next so yeah. what did we so do so, yeah. got- so then we've got all the things happening yeah. and I started to work on healing my gut and um, I you know did made I would make my own aloe vera water so um, medicinal yeah. aloe do you guys do much with medicinal aloe? No. no. Tell so us about it. Aloe vera, it's called, I remember it as Barbara Dennis, but yeah. it's Barbara Densis, aloe vera Barbara Densis, <laughs> um, the medicinal aloe. And what I actually started to do was, you know, I was trying to reduce that um, irritation through that ulceration in mm. my yeah. intestines. Yeah. And yeah. so aloe is really soothing, cooling. Yeah. Uh, it basically acts as a barrier yeah. uh, for your villi and those ulcerations. So which to part did help. you use? So what I would do, right, yeah. which I'm so annoyed at myself for not bottling it up and selling it because oh, yeah. now it sells for like $30 a litre on the oh, market, yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah, unicorn yeah. tears. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I um, took the aloe stems and you'd cut the aloe stem off the plant and you know how you'd have that yellow sap usually drains, yeah. so that's quite bitter. It's actually yeah. a really great natural laxative for someone yeah, that's, who's constipated. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So not great for me. And I'd drain the sap out and then I'd actually cut. So you'd cut the spiky... I'm, I'm demoing it to the guys, but you yep. cut the spiky sides off um, the yep. aloe stem yep. Yep. and then you cut the skin off and you're left with that gel, the gel inside. In the it's really gelatinous, you know, yeah. kind of really yeah. kind of like syrupy. Well, that's what I really want to know. So it's, this, the, it's the watery sap stuff that's got the, what the iridoid glycosides. Yes. I can't yeah. remember. Yeah. It's got these compounds yeah. in it. They're, they're very bitter. But they also irritate the mucosa, and that's how they have the laxative effect. Yes. The, the harder gel-like stuff has got the actives in it that do the healing. Yes, So yeah. for anything from like sunburn or inflammation mm. or inside or out. But the funny thing is, is with yeah. those products you mentioned on the market, you know, the $30 yes. a yeah, litre yeah. one, if you're looking for a soothing, mm. nice one, it won't be bitter. No. If you find one that you want to have as a laxative, and it takes about eight hours, I used to tell people yeah. to take a certain dose at mm. night and then... Yeah because they know it should be right for the morning. Yes. Um, but they use the really bitter ones. And you'll find some brands will change because mm. they don't sell as well when they're bitter. So you see these people have a really good product that works and then all of a sudden it's not bitter. It's a totally different product. Mm. So I'm glad you yeah. brought that up. That's yeah. cool, man. Uh, yeah. and, and, you what know, sort of dose? How much do you do? Well, what I would do, so I'd then actually take the gel and yep. I'd either add it into, um, like I'd blend it up and, and consume it or I'd add it into water yep. um, and soak it. And you'd actually find if you've got quite an old aloe vera plant, yeah. it makes a really gelatinous brew. Oh, like, really? Yeah, so it, and it needs so a cold... So the bigger old plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and right. it needs a cold infusion. And cold infusion is just a fancy way of saying put it in the fridge. Mm. But you know, I just okay. sound a bit, you know, smarter. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We always do that on yeah, the yeah, podcast. Yeah. Like cold, you too. Yeah, 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 cold yeah, yeah. infusion, a right, room temperature, yeah. for example, yeah. in yeah. cans would be very very different to room temperature yeah. in a villa in France. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I would take the aloe yeah. and I'd put in the water and infuse it overnight. Yeah. Um, and then you'd bring it out in the morning and you'd drink some of the water and I'd usually have about 30 mils to a cup. And, and that, eat the chunks? Yeah, and I would eat yeah. the chunks. Yeah, 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 cool. Yeah, if you're going to do it, go for oh, it, yeah, you know. Yeah, so yeah. no holding back. When, when I was in the state I was in, I thought, oh, well, you know, yeah. whatever, let's yeah. do it. So, uh, yeah, I'd make, make the aloe water and, and drink that. Um, and like you said, I've, I've never really bought them. And, and a lot of the ones you can buy, they've got, you know, sweetness added to them. Yeah. If yes, I remember one. We uh, I used to work for a company that had one in a litre bottle. It had sweetness added to it, mate. Remember how it used to be bitter and yes. work? And then it stopped being bitter and stopped working? I was possibly really thinking about that when I was telling that story. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought, well, why bring that up or not? <laughs> Many I've years got ago. An a long time yeah. ago. You were yeah. five at the time. You yeah. know, yeah. That's how old we are. Or I am. He is. Guess it'll be 50 in a week, a week I know, and a half. isn't that crazy? You Double your, your age. Bosses. As soon as you said 25. You could be my dad. <laughs> oh, my God. Fred Penn. Fred Penn, that one. Cut it. 
That's ah. funny. I'm that old. So yeah. you're that old. You need some lots of collagen. Yeah. Lots I, of collagen. Well, it's funny. No, I'm I, reckon, I reckon you look young. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Why do you think he keeps talking about this bloody 50? Yeah, thing? he's just trying to... <laughs> <laughs> It's freaking out. Half a century, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's more than the cricket team would score, especially the Australian one. Yeah, I know. You know? So, oh, it's old. Let's talk about yeah. that. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's another anyway. topic, isn't it? Yeah. Let's, well, let's get back to your sport. bowels. Yeah, let's right. talk yeah, about your yeah, bowels. Yeah, more about my bowels. Very similar topic, the Australian sport. <laughs> <laughs> no, it shouldn't be like that. I'm just jaded. I uh. just can't. No, anyway. Back to fun stuff like poo. Yes, mm. poo. So, um, yeah, aloe water. I'm making my aloe water bone broth. So... Mm. Yeah. We'd spoken about just before um, we started the podcast about my website and how on my website I have, you know, food your grandparents would recognise. And, yes. And yeah. I, I call it un- unadulterated food, you know, pure unadulterated yeah. food. Yeah. So I kind of looked at my diet and thought, well, well, you know, what am I eating? And we've always eaten well, but I was the things I needed to look at cutting out. And I worked out, obviously, with a leaky gut. I kind of think of a leaky gut like a fly screen or, or a, mm-hmm. or a um, screen at home and it starts to get tears in it and things start to uh, fall mm. through or, you know, like yep. a fishing net and mm. you start to not be able to use it anymore because yep. it's basically broken. And, and so that's kind of how your gut looks. And, well, you know, this is a very, nice. very yeah. basic yeah. way of yeah. explaining it. Um, and I kind of thought, well, you've got to, how am I going to start to heal that? Because if that's where a lot of the problems are coming from, I need to look at, of that, yeah, that angle. Uh, so I started to look at my diet and, and cutting things out. So obviously if you've got leaky gut, dairy, wheat, you know, those things that are harder mm. to break down, digest, are mm. good things to look at reducing or removing. Yep. Um, I started to remove lots of things from my diet like that. I started to make it really basic. I started to make my food really basic, uh, just real food, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. food mm. you'd recognise. I didn't overcomplicate it. I made sure it was cooked because, you know, cooked food's a lot easier for your body to digest no, and I'm break down. Enough. You're saying all the cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. I am cool. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, don't one of those... Cut that out. Everyone's doing... Yeah, don't red pen that. That's fact. No, but... Because um, we often get these... We get these debates all the time, you know, about that we should be having the raw food to be yes. easier on your digestive tract. And I said, well, I said, when I try to cook a soup, it takes me a lot longer to cook it from raw food. I yes. find, uh, yeah, every time I add something cold, every time I add something raw, my my pot on my stove has to come back to the boil and start again. It's like mm-hmm. and it's got to be a hundred percent soup before I can absorb it. Unless, of course, I've got a leaky gut wall yeah. and then the larger particles come through, trigger a reaction. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. so you know, you've, you've really got to think about your digestion and, and where it's at and, and raw food. I can, you know, I can tell you from experience, it was not the way that I needed to go yeah. with yeah. my gut. Yeah. Um, and if I ever kind of needed raw food, it would usually come in the form of like a cold press juice yep. without the fibre because if I was having diarrhoea all the time, I didn't need to add in any more fiber and i just was trying to get some extra nutrients but i also mean with cold pressed juice it's not pineapple you know pear it's it's veggies it's like we're talking nutrient yeah high nutrient yes yeah yeah yeah, because sugar again can be an irritant especially if your bowels really if you're just having pure sugar you know and there's no fiber your Mm. food comes Mm. whole how it should to break it down so if you're going to take that food and you're going to cold press it you're losing a lot of those yeah. extra fibres and things that your body needs to break it Did down. Did you ever come up with any cool ideas to do with that stuff, the fibre and the pulp? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have chickens, so that I feed my chickens that yeah. they love it, but I would actually make it into, use it into recipes yeah. and things. Cool. Yeah, Or now Tissues if I juice, well. I'll mix the fibre back through because you yeah. don't need yeah, to get rid sense. of it. Yeah, Um Yeah, so, but obviously then it, I, the least fibre with that sort of stuff, the better. So, yeah. you know, I ate lots of protein and, and you know, natural proteins and, and things like that. Well, I shouldn't say natural, but I mean mm. like good yeah. quality protein. Proteins, you can't yeah. expect to get healthy off animals that aren't healthy. So, yeah. I, you know, I'm yeah. a big believer in that. So, yeah, bone broth, you know, I started to make everything from scratch. So, mm. you know, Campbell's, Cam, name drop, Campbell's yeah. shitty stock cubes yeah. Yeah. Um, are not going to heal and seal your gut lining. You no, know, they're no. not going to have that glycine and proline in them like natural homemade exactly. bone broth has yeah. in there. That's going to help to heal and seal your gut line. They mm-hmm. don't have that collagen. It's not an anti-inflammatory. No, it's just glutamate. Yeah, mm. and it's, yeah. you know, um, preservatives, salts, mm. flavouring, yeah. additives, you know, all that sort of stuff. So I just basically took it back to basics. I remember growing up, my grandparents would make all that stuff so from scratch. We were using awesome words that we use now like bone broth, but your parents yeah. would have just said stock. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. just go into the freezer and pull out yes. our stock. Yes, stock. Yeah. Just yeah. made it fancy, yeah, you know. Yeah. We've just tried. We haven't yeah. reinvented the wheel whatsoever. And I also found one of the things when my gut was really bad was low iron. Yep. Anemic, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> I hate iron tablets. I, oh, yeah. I, you know, anything that makes you constipated, no, it's a big no from me. Mm-hmm. And anything that kind of causes you all those bowel problems, mm. I, I just, yeah, I'm not a fan of iron tablets. I never found they worked for me. Mm. So I actually started to introduce and organ meat. In your yeah. experience, if you have black poo, it means you've got colon cancer. Yes, yes, yes. So things aren't looking up. Yeah. Well, normally, the prescribed iron is, is FIFOL, which is iron yes. sulfate, which is iron 2 sulfate, which is a terrible form of iron. But I'm interested to find out how you came to that realization that these are the foods for you like you did some study or something yes. is, is was a time around that time or what what happened then yeah i it was it was quite hard with studying because a lot of the stuff that we looked at wasn't actually where i was at you what know, were you studying just that nutrition right. yeah so I, I had started studying nutrition and dietetics or nutrition not dietetics at that yeah, point yeah, in time nutrition. i okay. really wanted to yeah. um at the start i really wanted to mm. and you know, we worked off the food pyramid. Yeah. And oh, when yeah. I healed my gut, I didn't work off the food pyramid. Did you flip yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, I flipped it. I'm probably going to get home and, uh, you know, I'll have some hate mail at home. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> oh you come here, don't worry. <laughs> we can do it yeah. time. You know, so I, yeah, very much flipped the food pyramid and, yeah. and worked from top to bottom. Yeah. Um, and really didn't have bottom even in there. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. It wasn't helping my bottom, so I didn't, yeah. Yeah, didn't include it. Yeah, because you don't need the treats at the apex. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No. yeah After yeah, you've yeah. eaten all the other things, I get to yes. have my treats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I started to just do research. I think, you know, when you have your own health mm. problems, mm. you you become responsible. And I, I read this really interesting thing the other day, mm-hmm. and it was about, you know, your nutritionist isn't responsible for you losing weight or or becoming healthier. Your um, acupuncturist isn't isn't there, or your personal trainer isn't there to is it not going to make you um, have a six pack and all that mm. sort of stuff? Because you actually need to take responsibility. Someone can only mm. do so much, and yeah. you need to take responsibility of your own health. And that's the point that I was at. And you know, there was lots in between here and there where I tried. For a little while, I went vegetarian and. I tried vegan, you know, all these different things because I kind of was at that point where I thought, you know what, I should trial anything yeah. because then at least I can say I tried it yeah. and it didn't work for me. And it didn't. <laughs> like yeah. now I look back and think, yeah. you moron, yeah. because I did not need to be eating those sorts of foods when no. I was trying to heal my gut. But mm. I thought, what the heck, I'll try it all. Yeah. So, you know, long story short, after all that time of eating, like, you know, bone broth, real food, uh, meat, veggies, cooking it. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, worked on um, removing the um, parasites from my gut by trying to kill them off and then trying to modify the bacteria that was in my gut. Um, I actually took a lot of compounded stuff quite similar to the sort of stuff you guys brought out in yeah. Gut Right. Yeah, yeah cool. And, uh, you know, all your brassica sprouts and, and things all yep. compounded down. Um, and... I moved into working on my gut that way and, mm. and it worked for me. Mm. I, you know, I went back and had a, a colonoscopy probably yeah. a couple of years later, right? And it's yeah. like a, you know, 12-week body transformation. Mm. You've yeah. got your colon a few years ago and your colon yeah. now. Yeah. One's yeah. all ulcerated and one's not ulcerated. Yeah. Yes. I was listening to one of your podcasts the other day and it made me laugh because you were saying, you know, you go back and you get tested and then they say all of a sudden, oh, we don't know what happened to you, but you never had a... Yeah, you must have had a misdiagnosis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, yeah. I went to the hospital. Yeah had my colonoscopy to check up where my bowels are at and I got the phone call afterwards um, and said, oh, just go home. You actually don't have a bowel disease anymore. You must have yeah. been misdiagnosed and so <laughs> forth. Of course, uh, the scopes haven't even come back yet of your cells. So yeah. they don't know. They just yeah. looked at my colon and thought, oh, this so looks clean. nothing like. Yeah, colon so cancer. Cool. Wow, that looks yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. a fresh yeah. colon. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A compliment. People say you got nice hair, you got yeah. nice features, you got a nice colon. Yeah, yeah, no one's ever said that about me. Yeah, squeaky clean. Yeah. Yeah. Nice yeah. colon. Jeez. So I, I then. So we had a look at, you know, the images in the video of my colon yeah. and one was all ulcerated and bleeding and, and one wasn't at all. And then, of course, yeah. they called me back a week later. I still had my lymphocytic lice. Yeah. I still have my bowel disease. It doesn't just disappear yeah. out yeah. of your cells. Yeah. Yeah. And I went in to have a meeting with mm. the gynecologist and, and the um, gastroenterologist because this is when we were looking into a little bit more of my um, period. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. And they said, what have you been doing for your colon because <laughs> yeah, of yeah, yeah. the different yeah. images? And I said, oh, well, I'm... I'm healing it with food. Yeah. Mm. And they laughed at me, just right at me. Yeah. They told me that if I feel like I have endometriosis, I should look at a low FODMAP diet. So a low FODMAP diet and a diet could affect endometriosis. A diet can't affect your bowel. Bowel. Or your colon. Yeah. Um, and that was me. And I basically just... And they handed me the scripts and I said, I'm not taking them. You can try them in the bin. Isn't that really weird though? Yeah. Did they ask? Like... 
details because I'm I'm sitting here waiting for my chance to say, so what did you actually do? What were the I know we mentioned bone broth. Was there anything else that you ate a lot of? Um, so oh, a lot of herbs and, and the brassicas. You know, so, did you yes, say the, yeah, the, the, the brassicas? Yeah, a lot of um, yeah, a lot of and a lot of cruciferous vegetables. Yep. A lot of cruciferous vegetables. Yep. You know those really good farty, smelly, yeah. gassy mm, ones. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. ones. The sulfurous. Yes, ones. yeah, the yeah, sulfurous yeah. ones. Yeah. Um, I had meat. I kept meat in, and and, and a lot I meant of vegetables. Organ meat. By the way, oh yeah, not sulfurous farts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was actually just wanted to clarify for the listeners out there. Yeah, I wasn't trying vegetables. to describe your gas, but no. Hey, it was um, just going to quickly because for the people out there, yeah. when you got an ulceration in yes. the gut wall, it's a little bit different to the leakiness of the gut wall. So the, when we talk about leaky gut wall, what we've learned with this new microbiome research and everything is that it's more of a breathing membrane. Mm. It's not like when we used to. This weed seed feed stuff come out well before the microbiome projects and before we really understood what was happening there, where we thought we could eradicate a certain amount and nothing else would fill up the gaps while we wait to put something else in. And then when we select the food that they all feed on, everything's going to be fine and we never have to do that again. What we've realised since with this microbiome, things are evolving so quickly, things are changing so quickly, these membranes are like breathing. So it's a weed seed feed campaign in every meal. So we yes. almost need to structure our foods to provide some food um, for the good bugs. And that's where you're talking about functional foods, not mm-hmm. just indiscriminately feeding starches and carbs mm-hmm. and bland foods to get to the bowel, um, but functional foods that will change the ratio, mm-hmm. wipe out parasites, but feed bacteria, that sort of thing. And then with the seeding, what we've realized is most probiotic supplements don't do anything. They don't live in yes. there. A lot of them go straight through. Like a vacation. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. And a lot of the fermented foods and a lot of the foods that they base all this from, they don't have a huge amount of live bugs in it. Most of them are acids and enzymes yes. and what we talk, talk about, mod biotic compounds that change the ratios. Mm-hmm. So what you're doing is so clever because those foods you've mentioned, the sulfurous ones, and they've got antimicrobial properties, but they're also very powerful NRF2 activators. And if you activate this gene called NRF2, that's our first line defense. So you don't have to be too clever then. It doesn't matter if it's uh, pain and inflammation associated with endometriosis or if it's a first line defense with your gut wall or if it's a toxic exposure. They come and so say, your strategy was so cool. Um, and not if you'd done a, a bit of each, for example, if you'd gone through and said, okay, so I'm going to follow the food pyramid, as you've said. And I'm going to take some supplements that have these other things that are also good. It wouldn't have worked because you're looking at the large percentage of the food coming through. You would have been feeding them at the same time as you're trying to to poison them. them. And why would they eat the poison when they got food? Mm. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So that's excellent. And now that you've said that, I I had oregano oil every morning when I was unwell. And that is hot. It's a a hot oil, very antifungal, antiparasitic. Mm. Rosemary. I'd have rosemary as well. I would cold press garlic or blend garlic up and actually have raw garlic yeah because man I, you would have stunk oh, I all did those stink. broccoli I farts did and stink. the garlic I was single for a while during yeah, that time yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> now I feel so yeah. good no he's good now yeah no wonder Tom doesn't talk <laughs> he's just it's just too much um, yeah so garlic a lot of raw garlic and yeah. man it worked you yeah. know it yeah. just is a powerhouse you know yeah, so garlic um, oregano oils uh, rosemary mm. I would you know use lots of good spices and, and mm. herbs with my yep, cooking, yep. you know, all the antifungal, um, very detoxifying, you know, de- detoxifying um, herbs like coriander um, and all that sort of stuff. So I try, yeah. and, well, not, you know, support, they support those systems. Yeah, so I yeah. would use all that sort of stuff. And then I actually moved into incorporating organ meat back into my diet, yep. just like, you know, our grandparents used yeah, to. Yeah, of course, Because uh, yeah. you wouldn't just throw that sort of stuff away. Now we go for the fancy chicken breasts and, you yeah. know, lamb shanks, whereas back then it was, you know, real meat you'd eat every mm. part of the every meat nose to tail yeah, exactly. and we don't anymore no. well ma- majority of us mm. don't um so i started to eat a lot more liver and i um, actually found that my iron went from i think it was about seven uh, it sits at uh, 94 now and it's never yeah. gone down since nice. i started eating yeah should should be about a, a 10 to 250 yeah 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 so it's, it's and what's yours so it sits at around 94 oh, now yeah. Yeah. yeah and my whole life from every single blood test i've ever had and, and in between iron tablets and everything it's only ever ranged between 7 to 14 yeah wow. yeah which is crazy isn't it yeah, yeah, so it is. yeah you know those sorts of things i and you know your liver comes with your vitamin a and, and everything your b12 and all that sort of stuff yeah. to help your body to absorb iron and, and to break mm, it down yeah. and utilize it and, yes, and yeah. my gut needed that it needed yeah. all the help it could um, so you so should get the you cook up the organ meats you're not talking supplements sort of stuff it's real yes, stuff I, I, real yep. stuff yep, um, <laughs> you guys will probably 
roll over in your grave. Oh, with no, this we just have to have the lamb fries. So I? I would get uh, liver and yeah. freeze it yeah. originally and cut it into capsules yeah. oh. and just knock it back frozen. Wow, yeah, that's clever. Yeah. That's really clever. Yeah, so I would do that yeah. um, initially because I needed to boost it. Yeah. And like at, at, as soon as I could or as mm. quick as I could. So that mm. was the start. Now I just grate it into things and add yeah. it to things. I throw yeah. like chunks into Tom's smoothies yeah. and yeah. he's thriving with health. Yeah, very yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like cherry ripe smoothie with a hint of chicken liver and, you know, oh, things like that. Oh, very awesome. nice. Liv, Tom lives his best life. I, remember, yeah. I used to love sheep's brains when I was a oh, kid. Oh, did you? Um, until I went grocery shopping with mum and realised they were sheep's brains. <laughs> <laughs> it was really weird. I used to eat, I, like, I love them. Like, yeah, man, we're eating sheep's brains. Of course we're eating brains, like Indiana Jones with the monkey brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought I was so cool. And then I went shopping and she says, oh, can you grab bread? They're bloody brains, mum. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, yep. Yeah. yeah, and you know, that's the great thing with liver. You can, if people don't know they're eating it, usually, yeah. you know, if you're just grating it into things, liver yeah. itself is quite a strong flavour. Yeah. But if people don't know, they usually don't pick it up. It's usually if, if you are focusing on mm. making it and adding it in, that's yeah. when it's that deterrent for yeah. having it. So... Yeah, I did all that sort of stuff, worked on really healing my gut. I've kind of been able to manage it every, ever since. Like, there's no denying I have flare-ups um, here and there. Uh, mm. And then and then the endometriosis. So, after a little while, we... And um, yeah, what happened there? Yeah, well, my periods just were not getting better. They improved. I went yeah. off the pill. Good. So, when I went through all that gut health stuff, I went off the pill. Yeah. So, I thought that that was a big part of healing my gut was yeah. needing to remove the pill. And that was the only medication I ever took yeah, was okay. the pill. So, yeah. I thought I got to cut it out. Um and so I cut the pill out of, of my, you know, doing it every day. Mm. And um, I was, when I was working on healing my gut, my periods and everything got better, but nothing kind of got to where I needed to be. And then, of course, you, you start, well, I'm not, I should explain basically, they got better, but they never fully were as good as they should be. You know, yeah. you shouldn't be in excruciating pain for a week every mm. single month. No. Um, and then I started to have, you know, like almost like a, a puberty. After oh. going off the pill, like yeah. I, you yes. know, yeah, because yeah. I'd kind of skipped it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd skipped it. Yeah. So I was like 23 with like acne, yeah, and right. I'd never had a pimple my whole life, yeah, of yeah, course, yeah. because yeah. the pill. The pill yeah. And I just yeah. started to get, you know, like hormonal teenage acne. I started to, you know, have all those sorts of puberty yeah. kind of, yeah. you know, things that start to happen to your body. And I was yeah. shocked initially, and then I worked it out. I was like, well, of course, my body's going through, going through, almost going through puberty and trying to sort yeah. itself back out again yeah. after being on the pill for, you it's know, ten years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, your body goes through so much, and and I, I don't know why I ever thought after going off the pill within a month or so I'd be back to normal because mm. you've got to undo years. You, ten years. Ten years. The fact that you started it before you went through puberty it does delay. Yes, a lot of those things. Some people don't get that full development later on yeah it's, they, they missed that boat so it's good you kind of went through it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. now yeah. instead of 50 yeah. the other thing yeah. that those weird pills do is they actually change the way your body metabolizes your hormones so normally mm. when you so what happens they put in a certain amount of hormone they alter the liver pathway so you're making more of these like 16 alpha hydroxy estrone forms um which are the preferred form for the bugs and the bad bugs in your gut so you mm. probably were onto something when you felt that the pill was contributing to the, the bowel problems because it it really does because it can change your gut to create a thing called an estrobolome, which is a type of bacteria or uh, colonies of bugs that like to feed on estrogen recycle it. And that's a contributing factor to your endo. Well, mm. it's so inter interesting that you say that is mm. because that's basically what's happened. You know, that's what's mm. happened. So yeah. um, I went and then obviously spoke to some gynecologists and said, I've got to work out what's going on here. Mm. I've heard a lot about endometriosis in, you know, um, in the news and media and stuff lately, I've started to read a lot about it. I think that's probably what I have. Right. You know, like, I don't know why we didn't look at this 10 years ago, but I think it's what I have. So yeah. I didn't really want to have the operation, but it got to the point where I thought I need to actually work out what it is. So I had the operation. A laparoscopy is what they normally yes. do. Yeah. 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 And, um, oh, it's, it's a real it's a full-on operation. I didn't think it would be, and I'd had a lot of colonoscopies and things, so mm. I was kind of used to going mm. under. But, mm. um, yeah, your body, my body found that really hard to recover from, um, and I went on a hormonal treatment afterwards, which I look back now and think, you moron. You know, I could slap myself over the mm. face for doing that because I know better than that, yeah. but we kind of had, I ended up seeing quite a lot of gynecologists, and we had a really severe chat about, you know, I'm reckless to them. I don't yeah. take my bowel medication 
I don't take contraceptive <laughs> and I don't have a plan for pregnancy. So yeah. I'm just like this big red flag of a, of yeah. a patient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they basically kind of said to me that my chance of getting pregnant a lot looking very good. I mm. have, you know, um, I have lots of problems with my endo. It's quite, it's quite severe. Yeah. Um, you may just start getting endo from the next cycle you have and you'll just be back here in six months time. Or you could look at doing like a hormonal treatment, which is like Visain um, through progesterone. It's yeah. like a yeah. synthetic progesterone. Progestin. Methoxyprogestin is the one they commonly use. Just to, just to backtrack a little bit, um, endometriosis, for those who don't know, is when the endometrium, which mm. is the stuff inside your uterus, grows outside your uterus, all around your bowels, actually anywhere in your body. So it's extraordinarily painful when you menstruate. Like, you know, I've yes. never had it, but extraordinarily painful. So sorry, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, your yeah. your well, hormonal is, treatment. Yeah, so it's all your cells and they, yeah. they've just made their You're way through. Can I yeah. add something else, the link, just to link in with that yeah. ulceration in the gut? Because... One of the other features with endometriosis is you create endometrial tissue, period, yes. in weird places. Every time you have a monthly cycle to get your period, as your hormones drop, your immune cells that eat the collagen roam around your body trying to find this stuff to eat it up so it can shed off. Uh, yeah. And what actually happens then on a monthly cycle, your immune system... And because it's supposed to be happening across a particular mucous membrane. So what's happening is your immune system across all your mucous membranes fires up and starts attacking collagen. Oh, and that okay. contributes yep. to leaky gut wall, mm. ulceration in the gut. It also can... That's why... I mean, I, I know, what, no, I'm not going to get hate mail over this. This is why women get more wrinkles and cellulite yes. because of the destruction of collagen on a monthly basis associated with the periods. Yeah. So the requirement for that collagen to regenerate all that, but also the requirement for us to regulate your immune system mm. at the site of your mucosa. Because one of the problems with endometriosis and fertility is scar tissue and structural yes. clogging up of pathways, and that's just one. But that's... And the other one is the overactive immune system in the mucosa. So it's been primed and it's ready all the time to attack things. And um, the sperm's not yours um, yeah, yeah. and a fertilized egg's only half yours. Yeah, so yeah, the immune yeah. system wants to reject it like it did with the, the parasites you've had previously. So yes. that, And it's an interesting thing. With endo not many people realize that part of the treatment post-endometriosis to help fertility is to kind of suppress the immune system at the side of the mucosa a little bit so sorry no. that, i think that not many people understand that link with how how important collagen is for women yes. um i'm going to do a quick product vlog in amongst yeah. you because I, in my peripheral vision i spotted that and you're drinking, I'm drinking but it. what it is in collagen what's in collagen and bone broths and that sort of stuff that is not in plants not in whey or dairy or anything is a thing called hydroxyproline and hydroxyproline is the thing that directly feeds the collagen so we our um vegan aminos i hesitate to say it then because i have a different nickname for it yes. our vegan aminos um i call it the hairless vaginos um <laughs> because other aminos <laughs> other amino supplements have got hair in them and everything and ours doesn't and it reminded me of that anyway so um we have hydroxyproline available at, uh, made from all vegan materials. Yes. So that way for any vegan out there that wants to regenerate collagen quickly, the best and the most direct way of doing that is hydroxyproline. Mm. So. Oh, and they taste great. I'm trying cola. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm yeah. impressed. Yeah. Which yeah. one you got? The cola. Yeah, it's but good. Yeah, and I just drink. I'm not I a vegan. I like it through the soda getting... stream. It's good. Oh, yeah. 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 Anyway. yeah. yeah, but yeah. I, yeah I'm, a, I'm a big believer in that. I, yeah, mm. Proline's been a really important part in my regeneration of, of healing everything yeah. basically yeah. in my but body. But you know what scurvy is? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. No vitamin C. But yes. what actually it is, is vitamin C hydroxylates proline to make hydroxyproline. And so the whole point of scurvy is that you don't have enough vitamin C to convert proline to hydroxyproline. Oh. And then you can't build cartilage. You can't build connective oh, tissue. Yeah. And you get leaky gut wall and your teeth and everything. Um, and you get these infections. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, all that we, we're learning so much. The new n knowledge that we're gaining now, explaining the old ways. It's so cool. Yeah. Oh, oh. And I love that about this industry is I'm constantly learning. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I, yeah. Something I thought I knew three years ago is not it at all. Yeah. And, and it's constant yeah. development. It's only awesome. industry that you can focus. You can, in, you can pick a topic and think, you know, like 5% oh, of yeah. that topic. And then you just go, man, I'm going to learn everything about it. And at the end of it, you know 1% yeah. about the topic. Just, <laughs> the more you learn, the more you realise you don't know. You're like, oh, my God. Happens all yeah. the time. <laughs> Every oh, yeah. single bog. And if yeah. it doesn't, you've got an ego issue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You, you, yeah, it's definitely one of those fields where you need yeah. to acknowledge that you don't know everything. Yeah. And yes. I even think that I, you know, I was just saying before that I listened to your podcast and I think, oh, my God, I thought, 
such and such and you guys have just explained this and that's actually makes more sense so yeah you're right and then I'll you know change things that I'm doing based on that and I think it's it's not about being offended or having your back up about it it's about realizing that more research has come out more studies have come out we've gained more knowledge in that yeah. field and you move on with that there's no ego in science no, no it's all no. just assumptions and have a crack yeah mm. and, <laughs> and the one thing that's kind of never changed with my health journey is the food yeah you know yeah. It, it's it's real food. It's food that we grow. And so yeah. um, before we talk a little bit about food, because we're going to talk a little bit about gardening. Um, yeah. We, I, so basically with the endo, I had, I mm. went on the treatment, the Visane treatment. Oh, uh, did you? So, yeah, I know. You're yeah. like, you moron. Oh, I know. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say <laughs> that. Was, no, I, did. I say to my he partner. He just said really quietly. I heard it. Well, they, oh, I, we kind of sat in. If yeah, we, yeah. No, no, all right. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> we'll, we'll just scratch this bit. Um, I remember, you know, with my partner we're sitting in there and they're really kind of you know mm. you're not going to be able to get pregnant and looking mm. at my partner like oh, you still you want to stick around and yeah, yeah. i'm sitting in there thinking oh my god oh, you know this is all down to me i've been told ever since i was 12 that i'll yeah. never be able to get pregnant wow. and you know so it's just a, it's a lot yeah. to take on yeah, especially as, with the cancer yeah, the <laughs> yeah, yeah you know like, i'm just bloody hell <laughs> It's been a real roller coaster. No wonder you spend some time in the garden, just <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. shaking in the fetal <laughs> yeah, position yeah. or something. Crawl, but yeah. Crawl into a ball and, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I did it. I thought, you know what? I'll give it a crack for a week. It's the only medication I've taken in mm. years. You know, I don't. We don't have anything. Yeah. We know how people have medicine cabinets in the house. We don't nothing. Yeah, like yeah, if there's yeah, anything yeah. wrong, it's like take some activated charcoal and, and broth and uh, get no. on with your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dirt water we yeah, have in yeah, our yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We make mud cakes. The boys yeah, go, yeah. Oh, yeah, we just yeah, go eat the dirt water. <laughs> and they come in. Can I more dirt water? Like, well, did you eat anything poisonous? No. Would you like me to? <laughs> <laughs> Can I? Is there anything on offer? Um, yeah. So I took it. And yeah. you, you'll love this part of the journey. Uh, this is kind of like the, the yeah. pinnacle. I, um, a week in, I, every night, it's, I'm like hot as Tom oh, had yeah. to go sleep in another room yeah. because I was just burning up yeah. to the point where if Causes you... Causes menopausal yeah, symptoms. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, once you look at, once you look at the side effects yeah. of this, it's just out of control. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just hot as anything. Yeah. And then a week later, so we're two weeks in, my fingernails start to fall off, right? What? <laughs> so fall fingernails off. Yeah, they, totally they, fall off. They like, fall out. Yeah, <laughs> no the fingernails. Connective tissue yes. goes. The yeah. whole lot. The hair so, usually yeah, goes. Too. Yeah. So yeah. fingernails oh, fell off. Uh. Toenails fell off. Yeah. Hair started to fall out. Wow. Like lots of hair. Man, you must have been. I <laughs> it was just like. I'm trying to think of a good <laughs> word then. <laughs> yeah. Hair starts to fall out. Yeah. I'm bleeding from the scalp. Oh yeah. I've got cystic, like um, kind of like cystic acne. It but almost like, sounds like scurvy. Yeah, <laughs> we have yeah, been I'm talking scurvy. about this, weren't we? Yeah. yeah. And cystic acne is actually like clogged up my nose, my lips. Wow. It's all over my face, right? Yeah. My throat closes up, and Bloody I have hell. like pus all over my throat to the point where. There's, you look in my mouth and there's not one bit of white. That mm. one bit that's not white. It's what? like I could barely breathe. I, um, my lips, I was so dehydrated. My lips just cracked. My lips were bleeding. Yeah. I had a full body rash mm. and all my joints swelled up to mm. the point where I sat up for 72 hours straight because I was in so, I've never been in so much pain in my life. And yeah, this is, this is and so I spoke, effect. yeah, so I spoke to the specialist and my doctor yeah. and every single one of them said, you must have a viral Infection, the medication's fine, just stay on it. No, no, it and causes I, menopause. like, had already decided I'm, you know, like, I, it's already gone. Yeah, I yeah, had yeah. this, I was like two or three days into this when I'd seen it. Because estrogen's so important yeah. for connective tissue and collagen. Yes. It drives all yeah. the fibroblasts and the fascia, everything. Yeah, so it, my body had just wow. flipped out, and I actually had already stopped it when I was having the hot nights, like when the yeah. hot flushes at night. So I'd already, was only a couple of days in when I'd stopped it, and then this had come as like the aftermath. Mm. And so anyway, they said, oh, you know, it won't be the medication. You know, you've got something viral. And I just thought, I'm smarter than that. Mm. You know, I'm, it's, this is, I'm not going to continue this. This is done. We've finished this. Now I've got to really work on my health now because of where we're at. Yeah. Um, And so that was my little endometriosis spill. Yeah. So then I, of course, wear it like the worst part that I could be at with how Mm. sick I was. Uh, And I'm having the worst periods ever because of how sick I was. Mm. Um. So then I actually went and got genetics testing, which I'd love to see what you guys yeah. think about. What do you guys think about genetics testing? It's a storybook. The thing I look at with genetics testing, it's 
You, it's up to you whether the genes get turned on or yes. off. You yeah. can inherit. That's really really important. sucks if you haven't got life insurance. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. But because um, <laughs> yeah. they sell your data through to someone. Because that's yeah. they've been getting in trouble for that. Oh, yeah. Sharing your data yeah, yeah. and then people getting so rejected. Did you use Twenty three and Me or which which? Yes, yeah, so I did. Mm. Um, Twenty three Me and Fit Genes. Oh yeah. And um, I basically got out. My parents are divorced, and I yeah. basically got out there, called the two of them, and I was like, yeah. "Well, I've just got a few things I need to talk to the two of you about. Yeah. You shouldn't have bred." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should not have bred yeah. and who you brought the bad genes to the table yeah. like yeah. fight amongst yourself who, who have you yeah. brought the bad genes to the table because we had gone through them and, and mm. you know none of mine were strong genes you know we're talking like 80% weren't strong genes yeah, okay. but the ones that were really in red I knew from my health that I had switched on. Yeah, yeah. You know, yep. like the mm. impaired liver function. I had mm-hmm. really poor phase one and phase yep. two detoxification, yep. all that sort of stuff, which makes sense. You know, when you're having yeah. such a toxic reaction to medication like mm. that, your yep. body can't get it out. Mm. It's recycling. And what's so estrogen. frustrating, man, is you inherited that as a positive trait. Mm. Yes. Because a few generations ago, having your estrogen recycled, like having your estrogen floating around your body for longer, the same detoxification pathways for estrogen also detoxify catecholamines, which is yep. your survival and stress chemicals. So in the few generations ago, those impaired genes meant that you had more adrenaline and more adrenaline available to fight or flight, and you also had more estrogen available during times of feast and famine, mm. which is why your know, parents made a bad decision and bred. No, <laughs> we're very happy that they yeah. bred. We wouldn't be doing this right now. If they um, bred in the Stone Age, it would have been a lot more convenient for yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. that's the problem. Yeah, you just would have been... You Great wrong cave time. woman by yeah. the sounds of things. Wrong time for me. Yeah, you yeah. punch something and run. I know. Don't been stir good. up to. Don't yeah. pull a more on I would have been oh, yeah, oh, fierce. again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She'll punch you and Not run. for a second time anyway. Tough. She's estrogen. got a bit of muscle there. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. <laughs> well, estrogen's the most anabolic of all the hormones too. Mm. So anyway, now but what it's so about? interesting that you yeah. say that because yeah, I find that fascinating that it's, back then it would have been great, you know, to have those sorts of exactly. genes. And I'm kind of looking at them now like, oh my god. Mm, yeah, we're coming it, into an era where you're better off being exposed or. Um, just not reacting to stress mm. because we don't have those life-threatening stresses. Yes. Plus, the environment has changed so much. So we've got so many estrogen-like compounds floating through and all these things compete with our other issues. And so the environment that we've got today, having those sort of genetic defects, they call them defects now, the actual words are polymorphism. It's a variation to the gene because it just suits things in different mm. um, yeah. stages of our lives. But... Yeah, you were doing great, cave woman. But moving <laughs> forward, it's a pain in the yeah, ass. There are no bad genes; they're just situational <laughs> no. genes. Yes, that, yeah. yeah, and that's yeah. a good way so to put it. I've got some tight stonewash genes. I think they're bad. <laughs> they're badass, <laughs> man. They're badass genes. genes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what other ones I have? I had the one um, I can't remember the names. I and I needed to see a holistic doctor. I yeah. think this is about also um, acknowledging where you need to bring other practitioners mm-hmm. into your life, yep, and yep. you can't always diagnose your own issues because. You're not, you're not necessarily able to look at the big picture when you look at yourself as mm. well. I yeah. find you, can, oh. you have a real obscured so view. Biased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so I had a, a great holistic doctor and, and team that I worked with to go through a lot of this sort of stuff because I actually couldn't have taken the genes results and, and put them all together no, like no. the doctor does. Yep. Um, keyword holistic. Yeah. Um, and then sit down and go through them all. You know, I could have over time with research, but I needed to kind of know what was going on there yeah. and then. And, and she really was great. You know, she was she didn't, you know, say, Oh no, you know, the this ain't was for you, but this kind of it was no, mm. well no, your body couldn't handle this and this yep. happened and this and that and and so we kind of went through all that and from there we did a lot of compounding of a lot of the same sort of stuff you guys have in That's gut right awesome. which is mm. so fascinating yeah. i actually started taking your alpha venus as yep. well because we'd kind of looked into brewing up some chase tree rosemary kind of concoctions yeah. and then i found i'd always i'd there. always been interested in your products and i'd always taken your glutamine and things for healing yeah. my gut yeah. 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 um and so yeah i you have Alpha Venus was something yep. that really appealed to me because it was the stuff that we were looking at. So we, I started to include all those sorts of things and mm. I've had uh, two pain-free periods now. Yeah, beauty. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. that's all. Hey, we could, I, I've got to say one more thing while, while we're talking about the genes and yes. it's good you mentioned the Alpha Venus because it, it fits in beautifully with this. I go to a fair few of these genetic sort of summits and mm-hmm. these sort of things where we're talking about it because as a naturopath, I, I used to do a lot of compounding as well. And when I say compounding, like getting these activated vitamins and all these things. Now, these genes that we're testing now have always been there, okay? It's only nowadays that people are starting to find 
relevance to something like, for example, the methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, which I'm not allowed to call the motherfucker gene anymore. No, no. So you get the red pen out. But the MTHFR gene, what that does is it converts folic acid to the folates. Mm-hmm. And the, but the funny thing is folic acid's not found in nature. Only folates are found in nature. So these genes were always there. But what was different was we used to eat food that was full of varieties of nutrients. And when we ate food for our nutrients, it just bypassed these genetic polymorphisms. We had the, the variety of activated forms of vitamins that are found in foods. It was only when we started relying on synthetics in the forms of multivitamins, fortified mm. foods where they use the synthetics again. It's only when we started relying on that that these genetic polymorphisms started showing up as a problem. Those companies that sell folic acid for pregnancy and say 90% of the time it works every time. And then yes, we, coincidentally yeah. one in 10 people can't use folic acid, mm. you know. But in the past these things were never a concern. Now we went through a big phase with uh, well, hyperdosing the vitamins and compounding these really mm. in, intricate formulas and being so much smarter. The recent seminar that I went to, oh, I mean, I, I la- actually like LOL'd. <laughs> I've never said that, but I actually laughed out loud. Like, yeah. I don't believe people laugh out loud when they write LOL. No, I, know, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's a different topic. Um, anyway, so I was in this thing and the lecturer who's out, who's standing there trying to talk about all these high-end prescriptions, actually stopped and said, hey, guys, you please, you need to remember, we must fortify our prescriptions with food. <laughs> they all forgot that, the, <laughs> that, that you use food for these things. And she actually reminded people, hey, you, you yeah, don't yeah. forget, you can use the activated flash vitamins, but don't forget, they still need the bloody food. <laughs> Without the food, it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. And it, but in the funny thing is, is that 50 years ago, they were talking about fortifying our foods with vitamins. Mm. Yes. And now they're talking about everyone having yeah. to fortify their vitamin prescriptions with food. With food. Yeah. And it, and it, and it bypasses a lot of these things. And yeah. that's the big oh, point. It's, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's And we've totally, you know, we've totally gone away from basics and now I think we're finally starting to bring it back. We're making it trendier, you know, yeah. with bone broth and things, but we're we're doing that kind of full circle. Yeah, yeah. It's like how the outfits come back into play in the sunglasses and cars and things. Mm. It's Stay like, out of fashion long enough, fashion catches up. Yeah, That's exactly. my theory. <laughs> yeah. That's me. I, my haircut will be fashion you watch, one Everyone's going to be doing grey beards soon. Yeah, I yeah. know it. <laughs> oh, now, now, Matt did a brilliant segue into food yes. because you're an absolute yeah, really good segue, by the oh, way. Thanks, he's yeah, master yeah, yeah. segue. Awesome. From master segue, that's awesome. a great compliment. Awesome, because yeah. you segued right into foods. Now, you grow your own. Yes. So do Matt and I, but Matt does to a good degree. I do to an okay degree. Well, Beck does, if she's listening, she, she will be. Um, she does most of the planting, but you're a gun at this. So oh. so tell us a bit about the garden. I want to get into the garden. <laughs> credit, now. I would wear credit's due, hey? Yeah. Thanks well, for that, Well, okay, then, okay, sorry, it's my wife, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in case yeah. she listens to this but one. My partner will be listening to this going, she just kind of stands there and orders me around my garden. But anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, he, you know, he's, he's the uh, fitter, fitter, more able one out I of the I harvest two. and take photos yeah. for Instagram. Oh, yeah, yeah, me too. She you does know, the other stuff, I've got the to do the Instagram the stories and yeah. I've just harvested yeah. this and Tom's on his hands and knees in the garden, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, with obviously the genetics testing, we brought up a lot about pesticides, herbicides, and I'd already moved into eating organic. Yeah. But I started to think, you know what, I need to start controlling the food I eat, mm. you know, and, and eat dirt. I need to get that those microbes back mm. into, yeah. Mm. yeah, like, you know, mud pies when you're younger and you yeah. just, yeah. Yeah, oh, I mean, you're talking my Sunday. language. Yeah. You see how excited I get when you said to eat dirt? I'm like, yeah, eat dirt. dirt eater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's one of us. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah. you know, eat dirt and, and get involved in those microbes. You yeah. know, how often these days do we go out and get our hands dirt, you know, dirty? Yeah. How often yeah. do we get, in, I, when we lived in our apartment, I didn't, mm. never. Now, mm. I, every single day. Yep. But yep. we didn't. No. Um, and I think we just don't. And, you know, not often do we take our shoes off and just stand on yep. grass or mm. anything like yep. that. So we've totally become, you know, we've totally removed ourselves yeah. from earth almost. Yeah. Uh, so I thought with all this stuff with my genetics testing and liver, we've been growing food for quite a few years now. But I thought, we, you know, we've got to t- really take this seriously and, and do what we can to produce a lot of different food. Mm. I really wanted to start growing foods that I couldn't get access to, like daikon radishes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and would ferment them and, and grow them. And, you know, so I wanted to do all this sort of stuff. Yep. And I think what really got me into that just quickly was when I first finished uni and I had, you know, healed my gut and I was on that health journey and I started doing workshops, like mm-hmm. how you were just talking about before. Mm-hmm. 
I went and did my first workshop and I was in the car and I said to Tom, I actually don't know what I'm going to tell these people that they don't already know, yeah. right? Yeah. You, yeah. you guys Sounds all like love me this. going to medical yeah. conferences all the time. Yeah, yeah. What am I going to say this yeah. Yeah. like why are yeah. they going to be interested? Yeah. I yeah. get there. I start talking, we're talking about health and I kind of, I felt like I'd kind of lost a lot of the, yeah. a lot of the people there. Yeah. For, yeah. And I thought, oh, I, I said, what does everyone eat for breakfast? And, you know, 30, oh. 40 people there, right? Yeah. And one person yells out, oh, special K. Yeah. And I said, oh, okay. I said, and how many of you eat Special K? About 90% of hands. It's true. I said, I've got to ask, why Special K? Yeah. Well, the commando of Biggest Loser oh. promotes eating Special K. Is that right? I thought he was a paleo man. Well, he is. Oh. But I guess for Biggest Loser, that was a great breakfast option that he would give. I don't think it's a great breakfast no. option, but that's obviously a breakfast option yeah. he would give to contestants. Wow. Yeah. And that's when people thought if they want to lose weight... Maybe that's the kind of breakfast they should be eating. And I remember going, I don't think Steve or his dog eat Special K. Did Steve yeah. wouldn't Steve, even... Steve Commando, Steve. Just <laughs> yeah, for yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. don't know what Steve <laughs> eats for breakfast. Although I look like a Commando, <laughs> don't I? I? I look like him a bit, don't I? Yeah, yeah. Same well, body. Yeah, yeah. You know, St- you know Commando yeah. looks more like no you. Undies. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, no yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Commander. Commander. Yeah. <laughs> Go Commander. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bit of room, bit of room yeah. down there. Yeah. Flies eyes. That's Comfort. why the, the camera's no, only don't, from don't here up. red pen out flies eyes. No one even knows what that means. Carry on. <laughs> You're going to Google it and get a shock. Oh. No, don't Google image it. That's for no, sure. No, no. <laughs> Aren't they the worst when you come up with things like Google image? Bad idea. Yeah, don't um, do that. Oh. So, yeah, so I remember staying at this workshop going, wow, this is crazy. You know, I actually have a lot to teach these people. With, with food because yeah. there's yeah. no way in hell I'd be eating and special. breakfast food. is a good place to start, and, you know, man. food is yeah. just food. Yeah. Who ever decided that there was breakfast food? I know. Like, <laughs> oh, who man, that's that? a, such a good point. Like, who decided? Like, we're just going to eat this, like, nutrient, yeah. l- l- no, you know, poor nutrient yeah. carbs, empty carbs yeah. for yeah. breakfast. Yeah. With yeah. cow's that's, milk. Yeah, yeah, that's breakfast. That's Jeez. breakfast yeah. now. Actually, yeah. a genius came up. A genius did. Yeah. Because how who? much money do they oh, make? I Some know. genius. Like, what a, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, the Earl of Sandwich <laughs> or something, yeah. isn't this, it? This is a third yeah. of your diet in this box. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's yeah. It. And that sucks because you've used up your whole calorie allocation by yeah. the end yeah. of that. But that's a bloody good point because in my naturopath clinic, I used to go through and I used to write up these big, intense food lists and I'd go through all these foods. And I'd write up these massive amounts of information. And then these people are going, yeah, yeah, bloody whatever. Just give me some recipes and what should I have for breakfast? And then yeah. I was like, but you, you, you just those foods. Yeah, I yeah. just wrote any combination of those yeah. at any time of the yeah. day. S- salad, <laughs> salad is breakfast. Yeah. You know? um, lamb chops with roast vegetables is breakfast. Yeah, geez, I'm getting hungry. Smoothie. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's just yeah. food. Yeah. It's food is food. I, to me, I don't look at a box of Special K and go food. I yeah. think, what is that? You yeah. know, because it's not anything that my kind of basis of diet would consist yeah, of. Yeah, absolutely. And so then just to be – and when you really think about it, like we're grinding up certain aspects of the grains and throwing away mm. the better bits, fortifying it with some synthetic vitamins. Mm-hmm. We're then grabbing the juice out of another animal's udders and putting it in there and then sucking the – crystallizing the juice out of a cane – or something to put in yeah. it. Or mm-hmm. if we want to be healthy, we're using an artificial honey mm. that doesn't crystallize mm-hmm. in the cupboard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly, it's, yeah. And that's, and that's looked at as what we should be doing for mm-hmm. breakfast to be healthy humans. Yeah, and so then I thought, oh, God, we've hit breakfast. Oh, what's yeah. lunch? You know, I'm like, what's yeah. lunch, everyone? Yeah. So we get to dinner time that's and crazy. everyone in the room has not eaten one vegetable. Yeah. You know, we're meant to survive of plants, yeah. foods, mm. and we haven't touched one vegetable until dinner time. And you can't tell me that you're getting in five serves of vegetables at dinner time. You know, yeah. no one eats enough vegetables, no matter what you think, yeah. you don't yeah. eat enough vegetables. So that kind of then stemmed me into not doing one-on-one consults, but on doing workshops mm. and actually teaching people how to eat real food and yeah. giving them tools. People need people can't just be given meal plans because they're eating, you know, special K for breakfast and then you've given this meal plan saying, eat all these different fruits and vegetables and turn that into breakfast. And they're going... How? Yeah. How does yeah. that become breakfast? You know, it doesn't so look like cereal. And, 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 and I've been critical of some of the cereals in the past podcast <laughs> because, because, you know, we've had terrible cereals like we have five star rating yeah. on it, which is incredible. Yeah. Oh. A toasted, dried, boxed up, refined cereal with five stars on it. And yeah. I know it's special case, but it would it'd be up there. Yeah. Because I'm a yeah. bit embarrassed. One of the things I wanted to ask you is what's some great breakfast ideas? Yeah. Well, yeah. But this is it. Lunch. <laughs> yes. Or dinner. <laughs> and, or and, you know, <laughs> like, and I just use loads of veggies yeah. and things. Yeah. Like if I, if, 
you know, if I'm making oats, you know, or we're making a bircher or I'm using a granola or something like yeah. that, because these are common things we do in workshops. They've got to be relatable. Yeah. They've got to mm. be affordable. Mm. They've mm. got to be easy. So if I'm using, making up some recipes for breakfast and I'm using those foods that are still quite recognisable to people yeah. because sometimes drastic change is just too much or restriction is mm. yeah. too much. Yeah. You know, we'll grate zucchini into breakfast and grate carrot in with your oats and mix it yeah, all through. It'll soften yeah, up. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. just veggies. And yeah. it'll, it'll start to break down because you're putting, you know, you can put some lemon juice in there with mm. it and, and things and, and um, coconut yogurt with probiotics. Yeah. And the bacteria starts to break those vegetables sure, down. Yeah. So, you know, a breakfast like that is great. Or smoothies are great. And you know, grating apple through cereals yes, and, or and through pear. those. And apple and we've got that in the apple peel. Um, when you apple activate the pectin and that helps with the bowel of course but also the apple peel and a lot of those other pears and that they've got quercetin in it yeah. and quercetin's a really handy bioflavonoid for a couple of reasons very powerful antihistamine um, stops all those allergic asthma yeah. style things and that sort of stuff but also anti-estrogen so it actually works on the estrogen receptors and blocks those off so an interesting thing when you said you know when you said right at the start you had those lung issues you had the tonsillitis mm. you had the infection you had a polarized immune system that was stuck to the humoral allergic immunity the freaky thing is the herbs that you use for that also fix endometriosis because that same link mm. between those hormones and the immune system massive link and it could have even started with the immune dysregulation or could have started with a hormonal imbalance no one really bloody knows it doesn't matter at this point but perilla frutescence which is a really cool velvety leaf thing he used in a lot of salad herbs through vietnamese cultures quercetin any of those peels and that sort of stuff there's so much quercetin it's a very common bioflavonoid and lots of things all of those sort of things can be incorporated into your recipes if you feel as though you're following the same path if you've got the irritable yeah. bowel and we've got these estrogen dominance signs mm -hmm. look for in particular luteolin and quercetin um, camphorol and naringins are all compounds found in these things that you just google those words i'm sure you remember them mm -hmm. um, google those and find the list of plants and try to grow them and eat them yeah but perilla is so cool you, it's a was a perilla equivalent to like two or three leaves a day um, after four weeks was a 90% inhibition of histamine. Yeah. And how's that for Incredible. Yeah, and crazy. blocks estrogen. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. I'll have no. to do that. Yeah. Perilla's excellent. Yeah. yeah. So, so just getting back quickly to the garden because we are getting yeah. a little close to <laughs> time. I'll make two episodes thing. if we have to. <laughs> I like so, I'm staying all day. So, <laughs> so, so, with regards to to getting back into the garden and that sort of thing, what what tips could you give to someone who wants to start off? What what's we, easy to grow? What's you know? yeah? I think there's a few things you got to take into account when you're gardening. Um, sun, water, and food. Plants right. need what we need. Yes, you know yep. that's how they thrive. That's good. So. Sun, water and food. So you need to make sure that you're planting in a location that's going to provide your veggies with sun. Yes. So you need to find a place in your yard uh, or on your balcony or wherever mm. that's going to allow sunlight, sunlight to yeah. your plants. And for predominantly most of the day, our yeah. plot is literally in the middle of a field and it right, gets yeah. sunlight from morning yeah, till night. Right, right. Mm. You know, yeah. a lot of sunlight. And it's yeah. hot out in Ipswich and yeah, they thrive. Yeah. 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 Um, and they thrive because mm. they l need that natural sunlight. As long um, as you're supporting that growth. Yes, as long yeah. as you're, you know, tending to the garden. So I think location's really important. Good. Um, and I think, think about, you know, what kind of area you have. If you're just getting started, you don't need to, you know, we've got like a 15 metre by three metre plot at home where, and then we've probably right. got two of them. Yeah. And that's where... We, but we grow everything. Mm. If you're just getting started, you can get some little trays or some built up um, veggie gardens and just start small and yeah. choose what you're going to utilize the most or choose foods that are sprayed the most. Yeah. yeah. You know, like your leafy greens yes. and things are Find a great. Your and you yeah. can't kill them. You really can't mm. kill spinach, silver beet, yeah. you know, kale. Kale mm. just, I, like, if we didn't water our kale for a week and it was 46 degrees yeah. every day, I'll come back and it's thriving. Yeah. Wow. You yeah. know, it's robust. Um, so I think it's important to think of location mm. and think of how much you want to start to grow. If you're only just getting started and you want to just grow a couple of things, don't build a big plot mm. in the yep. yard because it's a lot of work. Yeah. We have to work on our garden every single and day. You so much produce. You're not going to yes, use it all. Exactly. You yeah. know, you only need a little bit of each thing. If you've got spinach in there, you only need like one or two little spinach plants mm. because yeah. you harvest from them and they continuously produce. Yep. Um, so I think it's important to think of of location i think it's important to think of what you're wanting to grow mm. and i think it's also important to think of are you going to do a raised garden bed or are you going to build one into the ground yeah. because yeah. the more work the garden's going to um kind of 
consist of, the less likely you're going to kind of find it easy to maintain. So we've dug ours into the ground because we're working on them all the time. Right. We maintain the lawn around them. Mm. Um, you know, lot, not a lot of weeds get into them from the lawn and stuff like that. But if you're just getting started and you kind of just want to check on it each afternoon or every second afternoon mm. as you're walking into the house or, mm. or walking out of the house, a raised garden bed's a great option. Mm. Yep. Um, but we use like a, a non-treated hardwood. Yep. Mm. Yep. Like those big kind of old yeah. railway sleeper mm. kind yeah. of things. Yeah. That's what we have around our pots. Treated with usually arsenic. Yeah, I was just, yeah, which yeah. is going to leach yeah, into your soil. It does. Yeah. So don't do that. Yeah. You know, especially if you're trying yeah. to create good produce. Yeah. Um, and then obviously think about you know you got to then get the good soils. So get premium organic soils, and yep. that's very available now. Yep. Um, we go yep. to like big because we have a lot of of land where we're growing stuff. We take a ute and go to one of those like sand gravel places yep. and load the car up. But yep. you know Bunnings is just you know the be all and end all for the home renovation awesome, gardening yeah. hero. You know they've got every single certified organic product and soil yep. there now as well, which makes it really easy to kind of do your own organic gardening at home. So we produce our soil up and then put compost in. Yep. So uh, not just plant-based compost, but, you know, manures. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, we, where do you get them from? Yeah, so we actually, <coughs> we me. have never really used horse manure from farms. Yeah. Because what we've found is when we've used them, they've ended up having lots of weeds come through because yeah. of what they're eating. And also antibiotics. Yes, yeah, hormone. Um, worming yeah. treatments and all that sort of stuff yeah. in there. Things, yes, yeah. so we actually go after certified organic yep. manures from yeah, yeah um, cow farms. Usually, cow farms our go to, yeah. and then we have go. chickens. And yeah, I have chickens, chickens that are organic; mm. they're thriving with yeah. health. These yep. chickens, yep. and they go through, and we you know rotate our plots, and they'll go through, eat it all, dig through it all. They'll poo in there. They'll get it all happening, yep. and it's great for planting oh, out. Can I talk a little yeah. bit about poo and dirt yeah. because I love it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not for breakfast, yeah, but yeah. just in general. Dessert. Yeah, yeah, dessert. More of a dessert kind of guy. Um, Heston style. I'll <laughs> yeah, make yeah, it look yeah. like a, a vegetable <laughs> garden. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, what do they so, say degustation. Yeah, 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 yeah that's like right. Disgustation <laughs> when I'm cooking usually. But um, um, basically, what, what dirt is, a lot of people just think, oh, yeah, no, we need the minerals. We need the minerals out of dirt. But it's not that. And when you're talking about compost and we're talking about poop and stuff like that, you know how we talk about herbal medicines and herbal teas and we have a lot of these polyphenols and all these different compounds out of plants. The medical world will say, oh, they're not bioavailable. They don't get absorbed very well. But what happens in reality when we drink these teas and eat these foods? Our microbiome changes those mm. polyphenols into other compounds. Compounds like urolithins and these other flash names. They give them. Those things are stable. They are bioavailable. But they're a little bit unpredictable because it depends on your microbiome and your digestion and that sort of stuff. In the soil, it's a little bit more predictable because mm. what happens as the plant matter breaks down, there's all your polyphenols and all your modbiotic compounds. The bacteria that are naturally in the soil from the poo and all that sort of stuff are feeding on these and creating what we call postbiotics. So here's another biotic. So we've taught everyone about prebiotics, probiotics, modbiotics, and symbiotics. The future is postbiotics. post-biotics mm-hmm. yeah. What we're looking at is compounds that are made by bacteria. A lot of our multifood, yeah. a lot of our nutrients and that sort of stuff that we're working out of vitamins and a lot of our amino acids now are what we call postbiotics. Mm-hmm. Where we're actually using what we know about the microbiome to create nutrients following the laws of nature that's how that stuff gets into a plant that's how it gets into the soil and that's also how it gets into our body from our microbiome Mm. so soil is so cool Mm. and i've done a lot of work with things like shilajit and this is what i'm so passionate about shilajit which is basically dirt from the himalayas yeah and just from a particular region where it's predictable and it does Mm. stuff and what shilajit is is the compost with the resins and the saps and everything that the microbiome in the soil convert it into compounds which we mm. can measure and make a predictable foods or drugs out of yeah like and that's it so people don't just it's not just so and this is why um pesticides and fertilizers and roundups and things that are going in and destroying the soil microbiome is not only creating problems with pests and weeds and things like that, but causing major nutrient deficiencies mm-hmm. in our food because we've lost the ability for our our soils almost like our gut. Mm. Oh yeah, it's um, like our ecosystem. And yeah, and yep. that's the, and so if we use the analogy for our body, that's where the nutrients are coming from into mm. our body, and that's where the plants are getting yeah. it. And then when you're throwing these things like the roundups and everything on it, and it's disturbing that, and then it's on food, and then we're eating it, and it's disturbing this. 
we're getting all the same problems. Mm. We're pretty much plants with emotions. Yeah. I read yeah. a meme about that. Yeah. Um, we need the sun, the water and that as well. Yeah, yeah. that's what I say. I yeah. just say we're yeah. bacteria wrapped in skin with way too many emotions. That's yeah, what yeah. we are. Yeah. And our soil has microbes in it. You know, we, we try and balance a certain pH in our soil. Yep. And you think about us, when we don't have enough nutrients, we don't thrive. Your yep. plants don't have a nu- enough nutrients, they don't thrive. So mm. you actually need to balance the soil, look after the soil, feed the soil. Yep. Um, between growing um, phases and so usually the ph you're kind of looking for is that six to six and a half okay so slightly on that acidic yeah, side yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's actually when they believe the microbes kind of flourish, flourish. in yep. in your garden and right. um if your um ph is too high yeah. or you need to raise your ph you usually use um a lime yeah, or like a wood ash yep, yep, uh, yep we yep. use a lot of ash from our mm. cooking or yep. our fires yeah. um and then yeah if you want to decrease it i can't even remember what you usually use to decrease uh your sulfur, sulfur. and then of yep. course your compost sulfur yeah. forms with water sulf- sulfuric acid uh, just yes. to so people know ph is a measure of acidity yes. of soil neutral is seven yeah. zero is very acidic so it's a scale from zero to 14 6.6 is close to neutral but slightly mm-hmm. acidic yeah yeah so what about we 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 where does your we sit what did, uh, well, what pH did we your trees four if, if, we are if, if you exercise, it's about four because yeah. you get a lot of lactic acid. Yeah. But often it comes up to neutral, 7.5. Yes. And my, my, um, my wife's uncle is Tommy Wyatt that does the ABC Garden Radio. And I listen to that a lot. And it's... He it, wants you to wee on it. He tells you to wee on it or use Vegemites and stuff. Yeah, I remember watching this movie once and, yeah. and the old guy was going away and he asked the kid if he yeah. could look after the house. And he, it's yeah. the Something Indian. Indian. Yeah, 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 the fastest yeah. Indian. He I says, can you movie. come and pee on my lemon tree every yeah, day yeah. to keep it thriving? Yeah. Look, our Is garden... Is it nitrogen? <laughs> Is it the nitrogen? Yeah, nitrogen, yeah. yeah. so... Um, yeah. Basically, then, when you're looking at your soil, you're looking at your nitrogen, phosphorus, and your potassium. Potassium, yeah. So your nitrogen's really good for uh, your leafy greens mm. and your stems. So your yeah. broccolis, broccolinis, uh, yeah. kales, things like that. So well, if you have a salad at my place, wash it. <laughs> <laughs> So, if you're wondering what to pee on, pee yeah. on them. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah well, that's of, what I'm saying. You better wash your salad. A, a, lot of, a lot of plants, for example, um, just can't get nitrogen from the soil. And so, yes. like, if you ever heard of the Venus flytrap, yeah. mm-hmm. they eat flies to get the nitrogen out of the flies. If right? you want to know a stupid fact about plants. That's yeah, well, amazing. Gonna, I'm, I'm, mate, you oh, know okay. what I'm going to do when I see a Venus flytrap next. What's that? Put we a fly on it. I oh, we're going to say pee. I'm going to say put a fly into it. I'm just going to go around. I don't care. I'm just going to do an experiment. I'm going to find out the nitrogen lovers. You'll be on the news soon. Yeah. You'll be locked up for pig on people's gardens yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. It'll yeah, come back possible. to this podcast. You yeah. has a lot of nitrogen. I blame Sophie. <laughs> so your nitrogen <laughs> yeah. is from like your seaweeds. Yeah, your blood and bones. Seaweed. Yeah, blood and bones. Oh. Your blood and bone, your seaweed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, what else? Your fish? You yeah. like fish any, any amino acids. Yeah. Yeah. Amine group is an NH3 group, which is nitrogen in H3, mm-hmm. the hydrogen. So lots of nitrogen and ammonia groups like the amino acids yeah. have got nitrogen in it. So lots of proteins. Fish yeah. is good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah, so we get seaweed, like especially mm. when we do like water Isn't with lightning? Things. Sorry? Lightning. Lightning produces nitrous oxide when it combines nitrogen and oxygen in the atmosphere. That's another good source of putting nitrogen in it. So yeah, yeah. You, need, you need lightning and pee for your veggie it. garden. No, I'm mean, <laughs> getting out there in a storm with my kite. <laughs> Ready. You're gonna get no. Thor and then call up Thor and get him yeah, to show you watch bolt my tail go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thriving. That's why our style. Uh, so then you've got your phosphorus, which is meant to be like your early plant development mm. and um, your roots, mm. your kind of lower roots, and then your potassiums for your deeper like tubulars and roots mm. and things. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's when your wood ash and, and lime and stuff comes and in. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So um, and veggies. Yeah, and and compost. Mm. You know, so we compost everything at home. Yep. We then have our two veggie patches and we kind of rotate between them. I get that that's not obviously easy for everyone. Mm. So just start basic. Yep. Really, if mm. you want to just get started, get some pots or a raised garden bed, fill it up with good quality soil and manures. And if you feel like your garden's not taking off, check the pH and you'll know why. Yep. You know, play it. we don't play around with the microbes in the soil. We go, oh, get this spray, get that spray, yeah. put this in yeah. there, mm. and then you've damaged everything. Well, mm. natural spray, that's one thing I was curious yeah. because I always tell people don't use Roundup. Mm. And yes. I, I specifically say Roundup, not glyphosate, because it's the combination of glyphosate with the permeate, the formulated glyphosate products are 10 times or 100 times worse than glyphosate, which is why that powers that be only want to talk about glyphosate but i'm always curious so we i feel as a naturopath or and people want to call me alternative medicine practitioner i feel the need to be alternative but i don't want to go and recommend something 
if it's got the same problems because technically glyphosate's organic we can argue that it's safe and natural mm-hmm. if you look at certain research steve i have you i asked you to do a little bit of research on the um natural stuff what did you find anything cool or, there is there is some toxic anything, things with um are they just uh, other, as bad? well they can be and yeah. it's yeah. dose dependent yeah. Um, but but don't be fooled. The, the bottom line taking home from the medical studies is yes, it's found in nature, but it doesn't mean it's safe. Like arsenic's mm. found in nature. Yeah. Cyanide's found in yeah. nature. And yeah. So in you wouldn't use forms, the arsenic treated timber to protect no. the things from no, the no. arsenic. Yeah. But would so tell arsenic's us arsenic's found in fruit. Keep interrupting. <laughs> no, that's right. So so the py- pyrethrin is a classic example of this. It, yep. it can be toxic. But in low amounts, it's okay. It's found in plants, you yep. know, but you can't concentrate it and that becomes a drug. Yeah, it's, right. It, it's like, bang, all yep. of a sudden you've changed it from being something you find in some flowers and this sort of thing to something that's concentrated that you put on your plants. It's quite dangerous. And then we also need to go and do that research on the combinations because yeah. it, what we found with the Roundup, glyphosate, they could argue, was safe. Mm. But when they put it with something else, that's what we call a permeation enhancer that makes it enter into all the cells of the body, mm. all of a sudden it's not safe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we may find the same thing. Perethra might have a toxic component to a bug, but if we then enhance its bioavailability mm. to make it work more effectively, then all of a sudden we're making this systemic poison. The classic so ultimately, thing. you're just better off just working with nature. Yeah, well, what happens in yeah, nature? Well, that's what we do. We do, like you plant your marigolds around the um, garden. Flowers, oh, flowers, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I love that. It's like having Google here, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, great. it's amazing. No, I'm not yeah, I love dumb it. it down, but some people no. go yeah. marigold. What's yeah. that? No, yeah. I love it. I think it's great. And when you do buy it, get calendula officinalis. Get the right one because yeah. some of them are ornamental marigolds. But mm. if you get calendula officinalis, it's actually got the real stuff in yes. it, and yeah. you can use that. That's why I'm a naturopath, by the way. I was real sick asthma and eczema. Yeah, like really sick. And my granddad and I was doing all the medication, and I hated it. My grandfather. We set up a little herb garden and grew some calendula flowers, some marigold flowers, to smash them up into our Vaseline and made an eczema cream yeah. and it got rid of my eczema. And that was, that's why I wanted yeah. to be naturopath. You were converted. That. It was yeah. such a cool thing. Isn't that you know? amazing? And the funny and thing is when I then, when I studied naturopath, the first book we got, I think in the probably written in the 70s or 80s, called The Modern Herbal. It's <laughs> um, not modern not anymore. Not modern anymore, but it, it is actually because of the title. So you mm. buy it today, it's still <laughs> yeah, The Modern yeah, Herbal. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But the first part of that book, before they talk about any herbs, is all about companion planting. Yes. And they're showing these big circles and saying, grow something in the middle, and then we build these things around it. And also, I think my main strategy for preventing um, everything getting eaten is growing 10 times as much as I need. Mm. Because they eat a lot, and then what's left over, I eat. Yeah, well, we share it. Well, we actually, I actually got into planting with the moon. Yeah. So ah. planting with the moon phases. And yeah. that's meant to strengthen your plants. Mm. It's meant to uh, give you the right time frames to when to plant um, rooted kind of tubulars, when to plant um, uh, leafy greens, that's all nice. that sort of stuff. And, you know, is this on your webpage, this sort of information? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. And, I was, and I have this amazing chart that I got from this guy down in uh, Gold Coast Hinterland and you can't reach him anyway. I just love that about him. You can't, mm. do any, you can't reach him any other way than write him a letter. Yeah, that's right? so cool. Which is great, isn't yeah, it? Like yeah. there's not many people like that Pen-pow. anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, he creates these kind of like astrological charts and planting with the moon and it's got things like when to mow everything because it's when you got your fertile days you're not so fertile days wow and every and so what i kind of thought was you know it makes sense it's like biodynamic planting and i kind of started to read into it and if you're planting your plants when they're going to grow the healthiest have the most natural rainwater and everything they're more likely to thrive really Mm. if Mm. you if you think about it and that's when this and the soil's ready Mm. um so we started doing that and you know, Ipswich doesn't rain a lot. And I kid you not, every single time I planted with the moon calendar, within about three to four days, we'd have natural rain for at least a week. Wow. Every single time. So I just did it the yeah. other day and we just had rain for the mm. first time for That's a whole freaky. week. Isn't that crazy? And I just remember, you know, yeah. we don't do it naked and we don't get yeah. that into it. But but you could. Oh, I mean, we sure don't because they can see us yeah. from the street. Um, we got but- a lot of ants <laughs> on our property. A lot of ants. Yeah. Is that why you don't get rain, naked? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Especially yeah. if rain's coming. Yeah. Like if you I timed it with the moon naked and then and the yeah. rain and then it'd be like ants. <laughs> if yeah. you Google Luga, Lunar Planting, there's lots, yes. of, lots of websites about it. Yeah, yeah right. it's amazing, Full right? Full moon yeah. planting. I'm going to take some, I'm going to create an Instagram page. <laughs> yeah, you should. Full moon planting. <laughs> just don't just bend over. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's yeah. what, that's all it is, Steve. <laughs> it's me bending over under the full moon. Planting. New moon, full moon. Yeah. Full yeah. moon, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Waxing yeah. crescent. That's what I was about to say. 
<laughs> I couldn't God. think of it the one else. I was trying to buy waning or waxing mm, <laughs> or bleaching. I don't know. <laughs> oh, goodness, man. So, yeah. Rectum, all right. <laughs> So yeah. planting with the moon's great, but you know, plant all your herbs. Your herbs are natural, you know, natural antibacterial, antifungal, and, and shit like better than an iceberg bloody lettuce or one of those mm. dodgy bit of yeah. hydroponic purple and bloody things. What? Therapeutically, yes. why the hell would we be eating watery cellulose mm. when we could be filling up our stuff with? Everything from the corianders and her- now I suck at things like coriander for some reason I can't get it to grow. Uh, I, I, yeah. Maybe because I eat it too quickly. But what I find is every time I want to go make a salad and I, I go out and my stuff see the gone to seed and I've got yeah. no leaves on it yeah. or anything. But what I've been doing now is I've got things that do grow no matter what. Yes, sweet potato mm-hmm. um, is just taken over yep. mm. um i got some grape stuff going and i got there so what happens when i go out to make a salad i go to get my salad herbs and there's none there but you can eat the sweet potato mm. leaves mm-hmm. and i can get my strawberry leaves and Beach then i go i go get my vine leaves off the grape. so i go and get all of these different brassica leaves color i make it up into a salad it's a hell of a lot mm. nicer this mm. stuff's great and we use a lot of that sort of stuff as wraps as well yes. with the kids so we go and get these little leaves so the sweet potato leaves are excellent for it because we can give them a couple of little things they wrap it up and eat it like a little yeah. spring roll or something yeah. like that but i find a lot of people will go and fill up their little herb box with lettuce yeah mm. yeah and that's it you know and people wonder how they can add flavor to food without mm. adding calories mm. yeah herb you know we've yeah, got herbs exactly. and spices in front of us all the time so herbs are actually a really good deterrent for pests yeah, cool. Because it actually confuses them yep. to what they're kind of actually around and what they're looking at and what they're trying to eat. So herbs are great. Uh, the marigolds, like we said before, mm. um, garlic and onion. They're yep. so pungent. Leeks, we plant them always on the outside oh, right. of, the, yeah, of the um, of the patch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we have natural things that we make up at home sprays. Yeah. Honestly, maybe once every six months I might have to look at using something like that because yeah. we're smart about where we plant things. Yeah. Um, we're smart about what we plant on the outside and we put our crops away from fence lines and things where possums are just going to yeah. hang. Because possums don't really want to just run along the road and walk over to a bed. You know, they, they're yeah, too kind yeah, of yeah. vulnerable then. Yeah. So we're just smart about where we plant stuff. So that's clever. Yeah, I'm, you know, full of good ideas. And my neighbour's got to have every second piece of fruit I grow. Oh fence. yes, that really sucks. Well, see, you know what's hilarious is, yeah. is we're in this area, and, and our patch is very visible from the street, right? Yeah. And we have like you know thirty cauliflowers growing, uh, broccoli, mm. huge cabbages, everything. Yeah. And not one thing's ever been stolen. That's cool. I actually don't think they know what it is. No, probably not. <laughs> I really don't, no. and I'm not trying to be hey, do mean. You but to seed? Do you let the broccoli go so to seed? So then I grow it to seed. Yeah, and I collect the seeds. Like a broccoli tree. Yeah. That's it. And no, they get, know. and then they yeah. bring all the bees. Yeah, I have to show right. you some photos afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Like when the broccoli goes to seed, there's like three thousand bees, which is amazing. Because then we plant new plants in there. Yeah. The bees pollinate all that because they're hanging around with the broccoli, mm. and it's just this little ecosystem that continues to go. But yeah. we always, you know, some things to really make sure of. Uh, if you're just getting started, just plant things kind of separately. Don't mm. get too um, complicated, and just plant you know your really sturdy leafy greens and things that are accessible that you'll use a lot of uh when you're kind of getting into your tubulars like your potatoes and sweet potatoes and um parsnips and things you've got to have a little bit more room they need to kind of spread same with pumpkins pumpkins kind of need direction to go Mm, off and spread so you you know you can't just um plant a pumpkin in there and then it'll overtake everything same with Mm. tomatoes tomatoes are the same sweet potato Mm. shocking we got once it starts as well you can't get rid of it it's there forever now yeah and so we actually planted our first lot of sweet potato with the moon ages ago yeah. and I harvested two um, I have I grew it from three different sprouted organic sweet potatoes mm. we harvested two um, why can I not think of that word you know the wheelbarrows oh, okay. oh. Yeah, wheelbarrows. Wheelbarrows. Two ha- yeah. We, yeah, yeah. harvested two whole yeah, wheelbarrows. Like, no, I put yeah. them four yeah, in the bed. ground yeah. and then a bucket's you know, full for everyone. Yeah. But now I look out in the yard and like it was a section like that. But now there's like... Yeah, it'll yeah. take it's, over. Yeah. Yeah. It is so massive. You, you've got to actually start to train things in the garden to yeah. go certain ways. Like we have our pumpkins go a certain way, our yeah. watermelons go a certain way, we have our leafy greens in certain sections. But when you're putting things underground to be buried as opposed to above ground, you actually should rotate. Yeah. those things each time because yep. they obviously suck out different types of nutrients and use up different types of levels yeah. of nutrients. How would you rotate something like a sweet potato that's just gone spastic? Well, we just actually... Just grind it back in and try Yeah, to well, we do. We kind of clip mm. it all back and just dig it mm. out. And, you mm. know, you'll get the old one here and there, but you just pull it out oh, and yeah, move yeah. it back mm. to the other location. Oh, yeah, so yeah. we kind of rotate it like that. Yep. Um, 
and tomatoes are one of those things once they get started you kind of really want them in their own section yeah. because they actually yeah. don't plant well with a lot of other foods yeah. i think mm. a lot of those nightshades can be a little bit like that sometimes um and also you know people plant beans and they don't give them anything to climb on or cucumbers yeah. mm. so it's important to and you know what the greatest thing is mm. when you buy little seedlings or you buy a seed packet mm. you turn it over it actually gives you everything you could possibly ever need to know about planting. Yeah. That, ah, you know, yep. that's what's so great these days. It's actually so easily accessible and yeah. so easy to do. You know, it says plant them 30 centimetres apart. Do what they say. Yeah. Yeah. Plant it 30 centimetres apart and it'll thrive. You're better off to have two that are thriving than to mm. have six in the one area that are all fighting for nutrients. Yeah, you know, yeah. if because you Because they respond with yes. increased defense mechanisms, yep. which are usually horrible bitter compounds and yeah. extra fiber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they turn into these woody, bitter things. Exactly. And I actually learned this really cool thing. I was at this um, health retreat, this organic health retreat, this, well, after the endometriosis problem, because I was so sick, I just booked myself into one. Yeah. And um, they were talking about gardening and they were talking about the comparison with food. And you guys will probably know more of the science behind this. I don't necessarily know the science behind it, but you've got three kind of bunches. You've got the one that looks perfect, you know, bunch of kale or silver, yeah. it looks perfect. It's green as, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. You've got the some that's had a little bit of a nibble out of, but it's really thriving still and really healthy. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the one that's just been destroyed. Mm -hmm. And from a nutrient and a health perspective, they always reckon you should choose the middle one that's been nibbled out of a little bit because mm -hmm. they reckon what happens is the bugs attack it. It has such a strong immune system. It then learns how to, kill the bugs that yep. try to ah. eat it and then by doing that it's actually got the strongest bacteria it's got yeah. the strongest microorganisms nutrients everything so then wow. when you consume yep. that you're actually consuming the healthiest out of those three that's a great yeah. idea well all these yeah. things that we talk about polyphenols and some yes. people might think about things like resveratrol mm. um shisandrins from shisandra all of these antioxidant polyphenols are also mm. antimicrobial but they're actually poisons to yes. bugs and the way they have big powerful anti antioxidant effects in our body is when we eat them our body recognizes that they're poisons mm. and responds with antioxidant mm. defense mechanisms yeah. so such as increasing glutathione but those aren't poisonous for us so mm. yeah, that's actually really of, yeah, same sort of thing and it's really interesting mm. so it's about you know and, and and you know when you're growing your own food you're getting nutrients straight away. You're not getting food that's sat in the supermarket for God knows how long. It's yep. been sprayed with so many things to sit there and still look perfect yeah. so many months afterwards. And you know what's in yeah. season. Mm. So yes. one of the big thing for us is to not eat. It's one thing to have a balanced diet. Yes. But we need a varied season. diet. We need to change with the seasons. And when you're growing your own things, you actually know what's yeah. in season because you yeah. get a lot. And what you suddenly realise is, man, seriously, my, I get mulberries for two weeks mm just before christmas and then another two weeks after otherwise i don't yes. and you're sitting there going and but in a grocery store i might be able to buy these things all year yeah. round mm. but in those couple of weeks oh man i eat nothing mm. but that mm. you know and and, and yeah. that's why we get a big cycle it changes our microbiome we never have the same food coming around allowing certain bugs to thrive and grow yes. before we knock them on the head again yeah yeah, yeah and that's it and, and everyone always says to me when i put up recipes and things oh you eat such a variety how do mm. you eat such a well we eat seasonal because yeah. we eat what we grow and so we've got brassicas at winter time or we've got you know leafy greens at summertime and we've got we only have like watermelons and rock melons for like about three yeah. weeks at summertime and then that's yeah. it i don't then eat them for the rest of the year mm. and and we got oranges at certain times and and yeah. things like that so it is it's it's so really you're supposed to binge when they're there yes. that's cool yeah and then the rest of the time you don't have them mm. And we have other things. And that yeah. way our body keeps adapting and changing. And that's how we cycle through proper diets. Mm. That's accidentally how we go from paleo and yes. keto to, to clean to a higher carb to a higher fat. We cycle through these things and automatically we do that. And when there's sometimes a gardener like me goes through large phases of intermittent fasting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Droughts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. um, yeah, and it's I also think about your microbiome in that mm. sense, the diversity of the food that exactly. you're feeding your microbiome, microbiome. Yeah. because we don't just want a lot of certain, you know, we want a lot mm. of good bacteria, but we don't just want, you know, three or four strains. We want a huge diversity. Yep. So you need to actually be feeding your body a, a diversity of food. You know, mm. if you're just eating the exact same thing all the time. Well, this is how I understand yeah, no, it. Yeah, Makes sense. Yeah. And I, this is an interesting thing when we talk about rebound weight gain. Yes. Because what happens often when people want to burn fat, they'll cut out all their carbs. Mm -hmm. They burn off the fat. That's like the end of your fruit season. 
So what happens, the bacteria in the guts, they're used to fruit season ending and going through a phase through winter where that stuff's yeah. not available or whatever, and then it comes back later. They have naturally built into be able to lay dormant for up to nine months. So if you're doing a three or a six-month campaign, you're cutting out the carbs, the bugs lay dormant, those bugs contributed to your bloating and your metabolism. As soon as the food comes back, the little buggers thrive and then oh, I'm pregnant, I'm bloated, I'm full and then all my weight comes back and you get worse rebound weight gain because not only do those bugs come back but they shot spores out yeah. expecting the fruit not to come back for nine months. Yeah, well, it's like yeah. a starving, you know, it's almost a starving thing and it's, mm. it's like back in caveman days yeah. our bodies would utilise. But normally in that starving phase we would be eating a yes. lot of modbiotic polyphenols that would kill them off. Mm. Yeah, but we're, we're not. We're not doing that no, now. No. We're feeding them with a different sugar or we're having the same food so they just keep growing. Yeah. But if we, when we change into that fruit season, we go into those low-carb phases, is when we need to be having more of those polyphenols from the herbs and the mm. spices to actually kill off the bacteria that was created for your fruit season mm. because yeah. they increase your calorie yield they yeah. contribute to obesity and all sorts of things so yeah. this is where this what we're talking about here is more important for the health and wellness of the population than any other yeah. mm. supplement or food fortification initiative and really if there was a campaign out there to tell people stop investing your time and resources and money into poisons and mowing your lawn and having a nice edge and start turning your piece of space or your land mm. or your property or your balcony or whatever you've got into a source of food nutrients, modbiotic compounds, polyphenols, that is the best way to change health mm. in the future. Mm. Not trying to create a bread that suits the whole population. Yeah. And you're yeah. getting all those soil-based organisms when yep. you're out there. You're also growing things in the environment where those probiotics you know, are around mm. in our environment. Yep. And you're building a stronger immune response. From yes. what I've read in a lot of research articles and things, if you're growing your own food, you're actually strengthening your immune system. Yeah, so that's yeah, why we yeah. started to do it, you know, yeah. because I... kids are the healthy yeah, kids. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we don't need to sanitize everything. And I don't wash anything from our garden. I know what's gone in there. I yeah. know what's happened. I dust the dirt off the potatoes and deal with wash it. Wash the yeah. salad from my yeah, garden. Yeah. For, <laughs> wash Side yeah. note, yeah, with a lot of stuff. And just quickly, we were talking about roundups and stuff. Yeah. When it comes to the things that we make to use... I just use things that I would eat. So yeah. I might use some vinegars. Yep. Yeah. And bugs hate oils. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. use your oils, put yeah. some chili on there, make yep. sure you wash that after you've yep. just yep. gone crazy. Yep. But do it at night time before um, it's about to go dark because if it's sunny and you're spraying all that stuff over yep. it, it can start to kill the spores of oh, the yeah. veggies. Yeah, yeah, so night time we go out there, yeah. I get the little headlight on yeah. and you'd be surprised at what you find in your garden at night time. Oh, <laughs> Not yeah, another naked that. thing. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, lots of snails, yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, go through, spray it all with some oils. Just yeah. water down some oils. Well, Steve-O told me that you... I can't even remember the metal now, but he said after you make your cup of coffee, you don't leave the water in the kettle because that's when the... Nickel is leached. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Um, so what do we do is we get that boiled water and tip it on the weeds. Yeah. yeah. Near yeah. the thing. And they don't like that either. No. Like the weirdest things. You can just kill them with heat or extremes yeah. of acid or whatever. Yeah, boiling water is actually perfect. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's, so yeah. we make a cover and then just whoop, sh, down yeah. along there, clean the edge. Yeah. Well, i got one really awesome edge next to the kettle. Yeah. The rest of the yard. Oh, yeah. 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 That one's thriving. Near the, thriving. Kettle, near yeah. the kettle, there's nothing yeah. on growing yeah. anywhere near there. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've probably come to the yeah. end of part oh, two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, look, are there Steve's any trying final to wrap it up. sort of... Um, yeah, I'm trying <laughs> to... He knows how much I've got to do today, which is exactly why I'm procrastinating. I'm having so much fun hanging out here. My calendar is messed oh, up yeah, today. Look, we got why do you just keep one. waffling, Steve? Yeah, we're trying to move on. Up you just keep more. talking and talking, interrupting with a new story. <laughs> <laughs> talking about right. peeing on gardens. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's all me. the irrelevant Disrupting things. Disrupting everything. Now, yeah. before we do any of your rubbishy wrap-up, Steve, mm. what the hell's your web page? Tell uh, us all. So, my first name, well, first and last name. Yep. Um, so, Sophie Van Kempen. Sophie with an F, but not yep. F-O-P-H-I-E. No, not Fofi. Uh, yep. So, S-O-F-I-E and then Van Van Kempen, V A N K E M P E N. Which we will put links up and everything on our webpage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, you know, people. Yeah, you know. People that know, know. You guys are all over. You're on Instagram. Yeah, I'm on Instagram. That's cool. You might regret. You might regret following it, but no, it's cool. I was looking at it. Um, I was cyber stalking you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were saying, well, it's kind of like legal stalking. If you have, if you have an Instagram page, you make it public. You're allowing people to illegally stalk you. To prep for today, I've got my full moon page. Yeah, yeah. I am promoting. I'm going to promote that. 
And so, so my wife, Beck, says, what did you do today? Oh, well, I stalked this woman that was coming in a meeting before, you know, about 8 o'clock, got in early to do that. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it, it is, it's legal stalking because and I wanted to prepare for the meeting. I want to know yeah. who's yeah. And what better way than to just stalk my page? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we can stalk you a couple of ways yeah. there and you're probably on Facebook too. I don't know about that though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, cool. you yeah. Could, you could do a drive by in Ipswich. You'll probably find our garden. Oh, That's yeah. cool that you do it out there because mm. I'm just around the corner, but I think I'm going to learn a lot from you because yeah. it's similar oh, sort it's of absolutely stuff. Absolutely awesome yeah. day. Yeah, it was awesome. Fun. Yeah, yeah, thanks so much for I'm having me. Make some stuff. Yeah. We're going to make some medicine I was going to bring some food for you guys, but I thought you might think I'm a bit pushy. Oh, well, yeah. we can go through and show Push. people how to make proper like decoctions and extracts mm. and turn mm. them into cosmetics and do some really cool workshops. I yeah. love that stuff. That's and you, amazing. And I'm talking about like culinary herbs that we talk about all the time. We can make into proper yeah. medicine. Well, I'm actually, yeah. I've actually just enrolled to do, or I'm deciding whether I'm going to do um, Chinese medicine or naturopathy now. No, don't because do Chinese oh. medicine. Don't do air. Just learn. No, let, let's, we'll talk more about okay. this. Because... <laughs> I think what you're doing is a little bit more special. Mm. And I think you need to develop more into the grassroots of yeah. stuff rather mm. than trying to learn a new language. Yeah, well... Um, in traditional Chinese medicine, it's biased because they think their stuff, their local stuff's the best, but they, you're, that's not your local <laughs> stuff. Mm. Yeah, that's your true. Your local stuff is different. Now. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Well, we've I, I really will, started it. No, I honestly <laughs> believe that Australian naturopaths and that's Australian herbalists that could be potentially be the best in the world because we don't have as much cultural bias. Mm. We don't have as yeah, much regional restriction into what are we allowed to use and we don't have a medical model that's based on ancient history that we can't substitute one ingredient for another when we learn from scratch and we learn about the actives and we learn about the soils it all brings it in together you've got a whole new thing where you've got western herbalism you've got chinese medicine you've got ayurvedic and that's what australia yeah. is australia is a mixing pot of absolutely mm. everything and then we've got the indigenous stuff that is the native stuff that is stronger than anything else yeah. in the world because of our climate mm. so it's yeah there's, there's there's bigger fish to fry yeah i think it's just herbs i you know i yeah. feel like i miss that part because we didn't you but know the tap grass into roots it but i herbs, yeah i would just real, the real old school yeah, stuff that, yeah I, if i was you i'd be looking for bernard jensen books and i'd okay, be looking I for will. what the hell is attacking my face <laughs> little bug. did anyone it see that a bug. i saw a little bug there yeah thank yeah gosh i was just freaking out over nothing <laughs> you need a little thingy what was what did you just say the venus fly trap you need one yeah, of them in here we need. yeah no, I used to and you it. could just pee on it every day i was day. just thinking about yeah. that yeah. the fly it's hard to get it anyone could get covered <laughs> Did you see how fast it was flying around? It's I got horrendous. no chance of hitting that. Nah. Awesome. Oh, okay. Well, don't <laughs> pen that. So, <laughs> you, oh, so do your right. adult yeah, stuff, okay. Steve. Adult stuff, Tom. Well, Sophia. No, it's not Sophia. It's Sophie with an F. Yeah. Fofi. Um, <laughs> Fofi. <laughs> That's right. We're joking about it. Fofi. <laughs> Fofi. Well, Sophie, thanks for coming in today. It's been That's an awesome right. morning. It's been so colourful, I think, is the only way I can describe it. And, you know, as colourful as the vegetables we're going to be consuming now and all the people out there are going to be growing their own veggies, fruits and oh, gorging yeah. on health is the way I look at it. Whoa, steve I love it. I love it. Thanks so much, guys. Fruit salad of yeah. superlatives there. Well <laughs> done. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I've been rehearsing that. Yeah, I can I tell. That was like a bit scripted there. <laughs> yeah. I thought like you bring out the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Serenade me. Yeah. Serenade yeah. me. Well, I played it a 50th last weekend. I'm playing it a 50th this weekend, believe it or not. Yours? <laughs> no, not mine. Mine's a week and a half. I'm not 50 yet. I know I'm not 50 it's yet. I'm only in my 40s. When is it next week? Yeah, Are you having a, a party? Are you going to have no. no. My wife's um, turning 40 the day I turn 50. How freaky oh, is that? Oh, yeah, that's cool. That is freaky. It's yeah, freaky. Just bragging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, oh goodness me! Well, well, we're going to call this a yeah, close before it. we cut, really pick on my age. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you, so for coming in and, and, and being the rose between the thorns and all this sort of stuff. Going to all the right, gardening yeah. superlatives again. Yeah, but it's been great. So, you know, thanks for having us and putting up with us again. And we'll see you all bye. next week. Yeah, bye, bye guys. Thanks. See you later. <laughs> Do something. All right. How do we do this? Though? you got to do the clap first, mate. Yeah. That's my job. <laughs> That's shit. He has to do it as well. That's legit. <laughs> oh, what the fuck is all that? <laughs> <laughs> you get mad at me. Hurry up, man. Hurry up, Matt. You're waffling. Now let me take 27 ways of describing a garden. <laughs>